What's going on, everybody? Man, we are back again. Usually, like I said, I'm not supposed to be streaming on Tuesdays, but uh, I decided to bring my friend here and talk about talking. something. How you doing, Sam? Good, good. How come you don't do uh, Tuesdays? I didn't know that. Because uh, I, you know, I tried to get a more structured schedule. So okay. I just, you know, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, that's when I'm, that's when I'm doing it. So Tuesdays, Thursdays, I'm just other time, you know, time to do other things, edit videos, go out, whatever. So. Salina. <laughs> Salina. Yeah, you better sing it. But, uh, hey, Talha, are you a Muslim? Talha Khan, if you're a Muslim, then maybe. I don't, yeah, I don't mind. Yeah, we, have, we have a particular topic that I wanted to go over. But, yeah, if you are a Muslim, you definitely can come on through and, and ask questions or, you know, uh, bring objections or anything like that. So, um, yeah, so the title of this stream is, you know, Muslims, please stop using this argument. It's absolutely terrible. You have to stop. Yes. But it's it's grabbing wave. It's grabbing wave on TikTok Ooh. right now. Come on. Um, yep. It's you grabbing it. wave. It's grabbing, it's, you know, grabs attention. Like they're actually, not just TikTok actually. Uh, hey, do you know who Jai Dion is? Jai who? Jai Dion. G. Dion. Something like that. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce it. He's but. the guy that ended up following some heretical pastor? Correct. Yes. Yes. And so his pastor ended up debating a Muslim oh boy. about Muhammad being in the Bible, right? Now, yeah. of course, this the pastor thought, you know, that he was going to go with the usual verses, the Comforter, Deuteronomy 18, you know, maybe Isaiah 42, the usual. But this time, this Muslim came with Daniel 2. And ever since then, it has caught attention, at least on TikTok, on Daniel 2. And, you know, he didn't really... He didn't really deal with uh, with Daniel two and his and his prophecy, you know. So Why he kind of let that he ignored it. He didn't deal with it. That's, a, that's a, so he could not answer just from the context itself. I mean, you don't need to be a genius; just know your Bible. So I hope Jay Dion, because I know a while back someone told me he gave him a shout out, but mm -hmm. then it fell away in heresy. But like I've said about <clears throat> people are coming into faith, give them time. In time, just pray for them. They may come to the fullness of the truth. Like young Don, I heard he's changed religions more than I've changed, you know, pants. Sure. True. With uh, young Don? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What is he now? I have no idea. Um, I know that he's changed his position on like the law and grace. Yes. A, you know, quite a few times. Yep. I, I don't know exactly where he stands, man. That's fine. I, I, I stopped, My point paying attention yeah my point is to everyone give them time give them time they're young just pray as long as there's breath in their lungs and they're seeking the holy spirit will continue to draw people but the thing is if you keep resisting the spirit that may be dangerous but they're growing so you never know 20 years from now where they'll end up so pray for them and pray for us that we practice what we preach and <clears throat> The Lord will correct all our errors, mistakes, bad theology, and sanctify and perfect us to know the truth and live out the truth for the glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, brother, in Jesus' name, the Spirit fill you and I. Give us perfect recall of every jot, total, poor scripture. Save us from error and pride and arrogance. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are doers of the word, showing we love Jesus Christ by obedience to his word. And may Christ be glorified. So I'm ready. Amen. Good, good, good. Yeah, uh, as we're getting more people coming in, make sure you guys are hitting the like button uh, and subscribe. You know, Sam Shimon's channel. I'm pretty sure everyone here already knows yeah. and it's subscribed, Shimonian. Uh, so make sure if you're not subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe uh, for people who are watching in the future. But yeah, so dealing with Daniel 2, yes, Daniel 2 and Daniel 7, it's about the kingdoms. Okay, oh, so let's go ahead and read. Not go to Daniel 7. That is a yeah. I, it's I, I'm oh, telling you, man. Matter of fact, because because I didn't want to. I know how you are, so I didn't want to pull up his opening statement and let you sit through that. So I kind of watched it myself and got through it a little bit, um, not all of it, but I got the gist of his argument. All right, okay. well, you know. So, but I I didn't want to pain you with with you know and put you through that. But uh, you know, 
you know, uh, so so basically, so let me pull it up. Let me let me pull up and share my screen, man. Yes. And then I'll show you what uh, I'll tell you exactly what the argument is, and then you can go ahead and and say your shahada. All right. All right I'm gonna take my shahada. Yeah, we won't be mad, by the way. Just there is know. no Satan but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. Go ahead. There you go. All right. So if we go over here, yeah, to Daniel chapter two. I see the Chrome browser. I don't see the Daniel chapter two. Give me a second. Yeah, yeah. Give me a second. My connection over here is a little slower than usual. It's but... All right, here we go. So <clears throat> let me see if I got the screen open. All right, so now I'm gonna zoom in so we can all see. And boom. All right. So the argument. Yeah. Is here about the kingdoms, guys, where Daniel uh, is getting ready to, uh, I believe he interprets, yeah, he interprets the dream that Nebuchadnezzar has, right? So just for context, just for edification, edification I'm, I'm going to read the context, all right? So uh, this was the dream, starting at verse 36, this was the dream. Now we will tell the king its interpretation. You, O king, the king of kings to whom God of heaven has given the kingdom, power, might, and glory, and into whose hand he has given, wherever they dwell, the children of man, the beasts of the field, the birds of the heavens, making you rule over them all. You are the head of gold. Yes. Another kingdom inferior to you shall arise after you, and yet a third kingdom of bronze, mm -hmm. which shall rule over all the earth. And there shall be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron, uh, because iron breaks to pieces and shatters all things. And like iron that crushes, it shall break and crush all these. Yep. And, that, and as you saw the feet and toes, partly of potter's clay and partly of iron, it shall be a divided kingdom. But some of the firmness of iron shall be in it, just as you saw iron mixed with the soft clay. And as the toes of the feet were partly iron and partly clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly brittle. As you saw the iron mixed with soft clay, so they will mix with one another in marriage, but they will not hold together just as iron does not mix with clay. Here it is. Okay. And in the days of those kings. Those kingdoms, right? Yep. Keep in mind, in the days of those kingdoms. Mm -hmm. In the days of those kings and those kingdoms, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that okay. shall never be destroyed, nor shall the kingdom be left to another people. It shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, and it shall stand forever. Okay, Just as you saw that a stone was cut from a mountain and by no human hand, and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, a great God has made known to the king what shall be after this. The dream is certain and its interpretation is true. Now, so would you like, I mean, it kind of sounds like you probably already get it, but do you want to hear what they say? Yeah, I mean, I, I know what the interpretation is, but I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure they're going to say that this is Islam, right? Right. Because, uh, well, uh -huh. yeah, you can repeat, yeah, make their case for them because okay. it is going to be a nightmare for Muslims. They're going to now prove Muhammad is an antichrist and all of the Quran is Satan. Mm -hmm. By going to Daniel, I'm going to show that very easily. By going to Daniel, yes. So now watch this. So. They say in the days of those kings, right? So while those kings were present, those, those kingdoms were there, yep. they are saying that Islam and the Islamic conquest is the fifth kingdom that God has established that, you know, defeated all of these other kingdoms, defeated these nations. Like since they come after one another, they're, they, they go to a... Um, you know, that they come one after another, it's consecutive. And so they're like, what came after? So the fourth kingdom is Rome. And they say, what came after Rome? Islam. And what defeated Rome? Islam yeah. did, you know? Uh, 
And so they say that Islam is the kingdom or the rulership or the government that defeated these other governments, Persia, uh, you know, Rome, yada, yada. But then they say uh, when it comes to that this kingdom shall last forever, it shall stand forever. They say that the word forever is Allah in Aramaic, right? Which means a long duration. So they say, it, they interpret yes. it as, it doesn't mean that he has to stand forever, like literally, but that the kingdom or the government will be last, like last a long time. It'll last for a long duration, not literally everlasting or forever. So therefore, Islam still fits the bill. Yeah. Okay, so when do you want me to decimate these arguments? Go, go ahead. You can go ahead and start off. Okay. Number one, if you notice, it says this stone that's not made by human hands, which is the kingdom, will arise during these kings. Did you catch it? Did you, mm -hmm. did you read that carefully? Yep. Okay, so highlight it for them that it's during these kingdoms mm -hmm. that this stone will arise. Mm -hmm. you know, so if you want to show them that, okay, so 44. And in the days of those kings, the God of heaven, meaning though the fourth kingdom will conquer, these other kingdoms will still be existing during this time, but they will be mm -hmm. subjugated. Because if we know history, we know that when a kingdom conquers a superpower, it makes that superpower a vassal subject to the ruling empire. Okay, mm -hmm. so now. During those days, not long after, centuries after, where you now have Islam arising in the 7th century. This is supposed to take place during this period of time where these kingdoms in succession, during that period, this kingdom from God will be erected. Now, I will make a cross-reference to Daniel 7 to show you that the word here forever means forever and ever no end to the kingdom because in daniel 7 we're told that the kingdom of the son of man is indestructible mm -hmm. the indestructible will never end but before i go there lest these muslims think this is a christian interpretation i'm going to show you something i'm going to send you chabad.org right. the articles i have two articles and i shared it in the comment section again yeah. holy spirit we ask you to guide us to perfectly exegete scripture Correct all errors and destroy blasphemy. You are the teacher. Now, Chabad.org. You let me see if I can send you a link. You're gonna go there. I'm gonna show you how to navigate it. This is an Orthodox Jewish website. They've provided a translation of the Old Testament, which they call Tanakh, in English with Rashi's commentary, considered one of the foremost medieval rabbis, who was an anti-Christian polemicist. He was not pro-Christian. Let's see, if you click on it, let's yeah. see how he interpreted Daniel 2.44. I have it in my article, but I want you now. You see where it says learning and values? You're going to mm. see it at the top, learning and values. Let's see it on top. It's a Jewish practice, learning and values. You're going to find texts, texts and writings. You see it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you find texts, now you're going to click on their texts and writings. You're going to click on their Tanakh. Tanakh. All right. All right. Yeah, but, you know, go back, brother, because I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, you got to enlarge it because I cannot see. Yeah. Okay, yeah, just let it come down. Let a drop box come down before the rapture. There goes the Tanakh. All right. So, I'm going to click it, right? No, you can just look at it, brother. I mean, you know, it just <laughs> reads for itself. Dude, is it early morning? You're dropping the ball already? I don't understand. I did this earlier. You told me to go back. Oh, I didn't you're... see that, man, because I need glasses. You see better than me. You got to enlarge don't, it. Don't blame me because you blind. Well, what do you want me to do, man? I, you know. no, like, give me some patience. Well, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> okay, now, to find right. Daniel, you're not going to find that. You're going to, well, yeah, see, see, they even have it lined up there. See, I, I do yeah. it the hard way. Daniel is in the writings, Ketuvim. So you're going to see Daniel in the writing where it says more. Yep. So when you click on it, you're going to see Daniel. Got it. In the writings, because the Jews. <clears throat> Break down their scriptures in three sections. So you're going to go to two, Daniel two, and then when you're going to, when you open it up, let me know. All right, it's open. Okay, now you're going to click where it says show. All right. Yes. Well, Chris uh, Gonzalez, your mother doesn't mind. 
that I look like Potato Head. Ask her. She she really loves me, Chris. Okay, now go to 44 and see what Rashi says. Yeah, without lies, Muhammad dies. Without lust, Muhammad is dust. Without lies, Muhammad and his lies are buried under the feet of Jesus. That's why Muhammad is in hell. Right? Because there you go. Now, right. what it says. All right. So this is Rashi's commentary on 44, okay. what we just read. Right? Uh, so, and in the days of these kings, meaning in the days of these kings, when the kingdom of Rome is still in existence. What will be set up? We'll read. The God of heaven will set up a kingdom, the kingdom of the Holy One, blessed be he, which will never be destroyed, is the kingdom of the Messiah. Wait, Rashi, who's an anti-Christian polemicist, who is not a pro-Christian, acknowledges that Daniel's saying the messianic kingdom will be established during the time of the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Now, you understand now you just killed two birds with one stone. You just buried Muhammad. He's already buried in hell, so you don't need to bury him. But you destroyed Islam. But now you put the Orthodox Jews in a dilemma. Yeah. If Rashi says that the Messianic Kingdom would be installed during the Roman Empire, where is it? Mm. We know it was established because Jesus showed up. But because yeah. they rejected Jesus, they don't know how to deal with these prophecies. Mm. You caught it? Yep, yep, yep. I mean, now, this is Rashi. This is an Orthodox Jewish website. It's not Christian, but Rashi has to deal with the text, and he acknowledges Daniel prophesied the Messianic kingdom would be established during these four kings when Rome is in power. And lo and behold, what do we find? Jesus shows up in the first century and says, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, Mark mm. 1, 14 and 15. Mm. So how are you going to say this is Islam when, number one, the context establishes that the kingdom that will be inaugurated will do, will do, take place during the period of the four kings or the four kingdoms? Yeah. The fourth kingdom being dominant. And number two, Jesus shows up during that period and claims that he's come to inaugurate, establish God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven on earth. And number three, the theology of Daniel proves that the Quran is trash. Right. The theology of Daniel shows there are two divine persons, one who is human and the other one who appears human. And both of them are truly God, fully God, and reign together forever, and all subjects must worship them. Mm -hmm. How does this establish Islam? I don't get it. Yeah. So... So their argument, and I can imagine the rebuttal, would be uh, that when Jesus came, he did not defeat Rome. He did not destroy Rome and establish a kingdom here and stuff like that. And this is saying that this, you know, this kingdom will be established, you know, on earth and stuff like that. So how would you respond to that? Jesus didn't come and destroy Rome and take over the world. Yeah, if, we, if we go with that logic, then neither did Islam destroy Rome because Islam did not take over Europe. It did not spread all the way to Europe because Islam advanced to Spain, but then it was stopped. And then Islam now is no longer a superpower. It's the joke of the world. So this proves too much. Mm. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because did they take over Europe? No. Did they Islamicize Europe? No. In fact, they only got as far as Spain, but they were stopped. And then the Catholics took Spain back. So if you're going to use this logic, this argument, it ends up proving too much. Yeah. Right. But the prophecy says the kingdom will be established during the four kingdoms. But it doesn't mean that when this king established, it will completely wipe out all these kingdoms because the expansion of the kingdom will take over a period of time. In fact, here, I want to show you something. Go back to that prophecy again. You ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's what they don't see because again, you know, you know how it is. All right. Go ahead and... Okay, now notice I want you to read Daniel 2, 44 to 45. Read it for us. All right. And in the days of those kings, the God of heaven 
will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, mm -hmm. nor shall the kingdom be left to another people. It shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and bring them to an end. Okay. And it shall stand forever. Now keep reading because I want to show you the prophecy itself said, though the kingdom will be established during that time, it will slowly expand until it engulfs the world. But finish 45 because I'm going to show you now the parallel. All right. Just as you saw that a stone was cut from a mountain now, by no human. Hold on, brother. See, this is why we got to read attentively by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. A huge mountain, but a stone. So stone mm -hmm. is small, right? Yeah. So stone was cut off from the mountain, not by human hands. But then watch when you finish this. Earlier on, when Daniel recounts the dream, he says the stone ends up becoming a great mountain. But read it. Finish it first. We're going to see. Okay. So just as you saw that a stone was cut from a mountain by no human hand and that it broke in pieces the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold. A great God has made known to the king what shall be after this. The dream is certain and its interpretation sure. Now, see, here's where the Mohammedans are blinded to the truth. Read 34 and 35. Remember, he's explaining the dream, right? Yeah. But now notice what they didn't focus on. Because here, Daniel tells you, it starts a stone, something small, but then expands into a great mountain and engulfs the world. Meaning, its expansion is slow mm -hmm. and systematic over a period of time, not overnight. Here, read 34, 35. Nice. It's 34. As you looked, a stone was cut out by no human hand, and it struck the image on its feet of iron and clay and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold all together were broken in pieces and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away so that not a trace of them could be found. But the stone that struck the image became a great mountain and oh, so filled the whole earth. It yes. spans in size? Yes. So it starts off small, mm -hmm. and then over a period of time, it becomes a mountain and engulfs the earth? Yes. That sure sounds like the church. Yes. Jesus established the kingdom. It was small and significant. And now it's spreading all over the world and engulfing the world until the Lord returns. Mm. Why did they forget that part? Wow. Why did they ignore verse 35? Do you wow. understand? All right, well, you're like, yes. well, are, you, are you focusing on it or like maybe you're distracted? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. That's because uh, I was just thinking. I was just thinking like, okay, yeah. I'm trying to think of... Um, you know, when I do this stuff, I try to think of objections that that I, I would raise if I was them. But um, yeah, I'm, I, nothing's coming to mind that wouldn't be short of, you know, retarded. But. Yeah, but now let me give you the parallel to this. This is not the only prophet that said this. Yeah. Go to Isaiah 9, 6 to 7. Another prophet already prophesied yeah. that the kingdom of the Messiah would start off small and then spread and expand. It's not overnight. And lo and behold, that's what we find in New Testament, right? Mm -hmm. Isaiah 9, 6 to 7. Yep. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase Did of you his it? Yeah, I see it. Before you move on, yeah. if Jesus' kingdom was to be established overnight, then what's there to increase? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. does this imply? It implies a growth, an expansion like we saw in Daniel. We're oh, seeing it wow. here in Isaiah. Yes. Isn't that exactly what happened with Jesus when he established the church on earth, which is his yep. kingdom on earth? It starts Absolutely. small. It's now uncalled, until then he returns. But finish it. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On the throne of David 
and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal mm -hmm. of the Lord of hosts will do this. Just like Daniel, this kingdom is forevermore, not just for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you thank you, Muslims, for using Daniel because Daniel buries Islam, shows that all of the Qurans of false God, Muhammad, is an antichrist. Because Daniel's God is not your God, but he is the God revealed in Jesus. And the New Testament perfectly confirms these prophecies. And we have Rashi admitting this is about the kingdom of Messiah. Yeah. You want me there? Yeah, that's easy. Right? Now, if you want to do Daniel, oh boy, Daniel seven is gonna. Yeah, yeah, we got to do Daniel seven. We got to do Daniel seven because because this this ain't just it, Sam. Like in Daniel seven, it gets worse for the Christian. You know what I'm saying? Because the kingdoms are talked about again, right? The oh, kingdoms yeah. are talked about again. Now you 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 ain't gonna be ready for this one. No, I'm gonna be stumped. Oh uh, yeah, stumped the chump. Yeah, you ready for? Yeah, be ready for this. So stumped the chump. So, so I'm going to go over, right? I'm going to go to Daniel 7. Stop the chump, man. Stop the chump. Yeah. This is the end, man. Your career is over, Sam. That's it, man. I'm taking a shot. La, 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 shaitan, <laughs> la, ma, Allah. All right, all right. All right. You can do that all you want. Watch. Watch. Watch this. So, so we're going to go ahead. We're going to pull up verse, you know, we're going to start at like verse 21, 23-ish. Man, play that. All right. So, 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 so here we go. You know what? Let's, uh, you know, you know what? We'll, we'll, we'll do, we'll do, we'll, we'll, we'll do 19. What you got to do? We'll do 19. Now watch this. So then I desired to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the rest, exceedingly terrifying with its teeth of iron and claws of bronze and which devoured and broke in pieces and stamped what was left with his feet and about the and about the 10 horns that were on its head and the other horn that came up and before which three of them fell the horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke great things and that seemed greater than its companions as i looked this horn made war with the saints and prevailed over the, over them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given for the saints of the Most High. And the time came when the saints possessed the kingdom. Now watch this. Okay. Yeah, dude, watch you're this. Gonna stop, stop the chump. Yeah, but here it is. Because, I mean, we're not even done. But just in the beginning here, you see, you see how the, the horn, how the horn, you know, made war against the saints and blasphemed. Yes. Um, Against the Most High? Well, yeah. that was Constantine. Oh, my that goodness. was Constantine. Oh, my uh, even some people would call Constantine a heretic or a pagan. He was a pagan, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that's that. You ain't got nothing to say there. So, you uh, stopped me there? Yeah, okay, let me know what you want me to yeah, yeah, well, yeah, just be, you know, you know, let me just read your book. I'm going to just keep, we just going to read. My book. I'm scared of my book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse 23, thus he said, as for the fourth beast, there shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all the kingdoms, and it shall devour the whole earth and trample it down and break it to pieces. And as for the 10 horns, out of this kingdom, 10 kings shall rise and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the former ones and shall put down three kings. He shall speak words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high and shall think to change the times and the law. You see, that's that's Christianity trying to change yeah. the law. Uh-huh, I heard that. Yep, the popes and, and stuff, they're trying to change it constantly. And I heard that, Poppy, Mark Poppy. And, the, and the, the council of... Uh, the Council of Levit Leviticus. Um, and they shall be given into his hand for a time, times, and, a, and half a time. But the court shall sit in judgment, and his dominion shall be taken away to be consumed and destroyed to the end. And the kingdom and the dominion 
and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven yeah. shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high. Mm -hmm. His kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Okay. So am I stumped now? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. All right, guys. Here's what I'm going to encourage every one of you guys to do. You're going to read Daniel 7 and 8 together later, not tonight, because I'm going to give you a brief overview of what this is talking about. However, you have to be careful of what commentary you read, because this requires a lot of background information, meaning you need to know the historical archaeological background. And since Daniel's prophesying these events, if you don't know history, you don't have sources telling you what happened from the time of the reign of the Babylonians to the time of Christ, you won't understand that much of what Daniel said, much of it was already fulfilled before the birth of Christ, not all of it. So I'm going to give you a brief over any good Bible commentary. I would recommend conservative commentaries. And here's why I got to take some time to unpack it. Gunslinger, take it easy. We'll use John 17, 3 and Numbers 23, 19 to show why Muhammad is in hell like a dog under the feet of Jesus. Take it easy, Gunslinger. Don't manifest. <laughs> now, for the rest of you, if you're paying attention, the reason why I say conservatives is because mm -hmm. there are liberal critical scholars who don't believe that God inspires prophets to foretell the future. The book of Daniel is so shocking and marvelous that Daniel, writing in the 6th century B.C., foretells hundreds of years of conflicts and accurately mentions successive kingdoms and even prophesied the rise of Antiochus. But since these scholars don't believe God would inspire a man to know the future that detail, they actually believe that Daniel was written after these events. That's how accurate Daniel is. I'm not exaggerating. They even say that Daniel was written 2nd century BC, not 6th century BC, because mm. they cannot envision that Daniel would be able to foretell hundreds of years of history, accurately foretelling the wars between Ptolemies, you know, Syria and Egypt, mm -hmm. and the rise of Antiochus, Epiphanes IV. There's no way. He must have been writing after the fact, someone, some group, and then retrojected it back into the 6th century. However, the internal evidence, the linguistic evidence, and the external evidence shows Daniel cannot be a 2nd century B.C. composition. This mm. is how marvelous Daniel is. It is mind-blowing. So if you read a critical scholar, he'll tell you, yeah, these events are all about first Babylon, then the Medes Persians, then Alexander Macedonia, who's mentioned, described in Daniel 8. And Daniel even tells you that during the reign of that shaggy goat, who's supposed to be Alexander Macedonia Great, it says that his empire would be divided into four kingdoms. And that's exactly what happened. Mm. Read your history. When Alexander died young, he had four generals that divided the kingdom. And Daniel 8 mentions it. It's in Daniel 8. Go read it. I'm not exaggerating. And it says, from the fourth will come a little horn and he'll rise to prominence. And the way he describes that little horn, it's Antiochus Epiphanes the fourth. These events culminate with the Maccabean revolt. So you got to know history. What do I mean? Daniel accurately foretells all the events that lead to Hanukkah. But mm. scholars can't believe that Daniel could tell, foretell in the 6th century BC all the events that lead to Hanukkah. Because most of these prophecies culminate in Hanukkah. I'm not exaggerating. If you read Daniel 7 and 8, you'll be blown away and get a commentary. Tell, oh, yeah, this is about this empire. And this is about this king of Egypt who rose against the king of Syria. And back and forth they went. And it even and they say, this is how we know it's written after the fact. Why? There's no way Daniel could have envisioned this beforehand. Because mm -hmm. they don't believe God inspires people. Mm -hmm. But if God is real, and he is, and he's the Lord of history, and he is, he can show a prophet hundreds of years of history before it happens and record it as a witness that the God of the Bible is true. Wow. So this little horn 
is Antiochus, but Antiochus then becomes a picture of the Antichrist. Because there's a part in Daniel 11 that does not fit Antiochus. So Antiochus is a picture of Antichrist. But it culminates with the people of the saints of the Most High being given victory over Antiochus. And this is where Hanukkah comes in. What do I mean? If you look at your history in 167 BC, Antiochus, the little horn, who rose from the four horns, the divided empire of Alexander the Great, which Daniel prophesied in Daniel 8. Read it. It's right there. I'm not lying. Mentions it because it says that Shaggy Goat destroyed the two horns, which is Medus, Media Persia. It even says the Medus Persian Empire, which conquered Babylon, was then conquered by the Shaggy Goat. That's Alexander. But from him came four horns, four kings. And that happened. His generals divided the kingdom. And from the midst came the little horn who spoke blasphemies, exactly what Antiochus did. And Antiochus changed the law. If you read First and Second Maccabees, he entered Jerusalem in 167 BC. He defiled the temple, slaughtered thousands of Jews. He slaughtered a pig on the altar and built an altar to Zeus and demanded that the Jews no longer sacrifice and follow their holy days. That's what Daniel was talking about, not Constantine. So when did God give the people of the saints of the Most High victory? Now, get ready to be blown away. In 165 BC, on December 25th, December 25th, Judas Maccabees, leading a small army, conquered Antiochus' army, reclaimed the temple for God, and that began the commencement of Hanukkah. When? Mm. December 25th, 165 BC. That's when the saints, the people of Saints of Mosai were given victory over this blasphemous horn. This is why our Lord Jesus in John 10, 22 to 23, celebrates Hanukkah. If you open up John 10, 22 to 23, Jesus honored this victory by celebrating Hanukkah. And it says he was in Jerusalem during the Feast of Dedication. That's what Hanukkah means, dedication. And John even has to say it's in winter. But to see, the reason why we don't know is because we don't read First and Second Maccabees. If you read First and Second Maccabees, you will then see how Daniel's prophecies are being fulfilled during this period of history. And yet, because we don't read these books, we're unaware See, even Raider Apologetics, who's a brother in the Lord, who's a messianic follower of Jesus. See, he knows this. I'm preaching to the choir. He knows this already. Hmm. So most of the prophecies were already fulfilled by 165 BC. Elements of it await the rise of the Antichrist because Antiochus becomes a picture of the Antichrist. But this history already fulfilled before the arrival of Jesus. It has nothing to do with Constantine, and it has nothing to do with Islam. Nothing whatsoever. And just to show you that Jesus celebrated Hanukkah, if you want to open up your Bible, go to John 10, 22, 23, because Hanukkah means dedication. Now, by the way, this is why critical scholars say Daniel was written after the fact. This is their reason. If you ask why, there is no possible way someone in the 6th century Five years before the birth of the Lord, could tell you all of this history, which kingdom would conquer which, and that when the shaggy goat, which is Alexander, rises to power, his kingdom would divide, be divided into four kingdoms, which happened, and from their midst would come a little horn, which happened, Antiochus, who then entered Jerusalem and defiled it and changed seasons. No way he could know this. This must have been written after the fact. What, what chapter you said of John? John 10, 22 to 23. John 10, 22. What does this have to do with Islam? Can you tell me? Mm -mm. Here it is. Where did Jesus celebrate? Right here, guys. What do you mean, where did Jesus? Right here. John 10, 22, 23. Yep. At the feast, at, the, at that time, the feast of dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the colonnade of Solomon. Get any good Bible commentary or textual note. Like if you go to the NET, it has a note to tell you this is Hanukkah. Because the word Hanukkah means dedication. So Jesus celebrated Hanukkah. 
So what does this got to do with Islam? Can you tell me? Uh, y yeah, uh, definitely. Um, what does it got to do with Hanukkah, dude? Man, you I, must be in love. You distracted on that phone player. No, no, no. I, I'm gonna show you what what it has to do with is with with Islam. <laughs> Trust me. By the way, if you have the NET, like New England, they have notes. So if you change it and look at their note, they'll tell you this is Hanukkah dedication because that's the word Hanukkah means dedication. Okay. Okay. All right. We're gonna look at Daniel 7, 13, 14. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna see what Rashi says who that son of man is. Okay. Now, guys, did you hear the date? Did you hear the date? When uh -huh. did they dedicate the temple to God? December 25th, 165 BC. Does that mm -hmm. sound from December 25th? Sounds familiar to me, man. Could it Sounds be like could that be the reason why Christians decided to honor Christ's birthday on December 25th because if the temple was rededicated to God on December 25th and Jesus' physical body is the living, indestructible temple of God, it only makes sense. Mm, yeah. Things that make you go, hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. All right. But you didn't check the NIT. It's all right, brother. Okay, now read Daniel 7 through 14. Yeah. I want to know how in the world does this coincide with, coincide with Islam? Because notice this figure. Now, now, yeah, I'm gonna show you how. Okay, please. Yes, I got you, man. I got you. I'm about to. I'm. I'm telling you, you all that yapping you're doing, man. I, I got I this. Know. This. I need attention, brother. Forgive me. Yeah, I, 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 clearly. Now, now watch. Now watch how this breaks down. The Son of Man. All right. First of all, is Son of Man a divine title? No, because no. even. He's, even Ezekiel is called a son of man. Really? So yeah. Ezekiel is a son of man who rides the clouds of heaven and has a well, kingdom that's destructible and be worshipped by all nations? Well, let's be clear here. So a son of man, you know, just simply means like a son of Adam, like a son of a, a human being, you know? And so it's a general title. Now, this particular son of man is Muhammad. Mm. Yeah, it's Muhammad. Let me tell you why. Because it says here in verse 13, I saw in the night visions. Does that sound familiar? In the night visions? Yeah, mirage. Yeah, boom. There you go. See? You got it, Sam. You got it. So the night, the night journey, Muhammad was taken in a night journey. Oh. And even the Hadiths call it a vision. So it's the night visions. The night journey is the night visions. Okay? Not only that, watch this. So and behold, with the clouds of heaven. It doesn't say that he's riding the clouds of heaven. He's coming with the clouds of heaven because, oh. of God, because he's going through and passing through the different levels of heaven. So he oh. has to go with the clouds, right? Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 And, then, uh, and then he approaches the Ancient of Days, which is what happened when he received the order of how many prayers we're supposed to pray. Boom. You know, he spoke with Allah behind the veil. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, and, uh, yeah, and then he's given, you know, dominion and a kingdom and glory, and uh, oh, peoples awesome. will awesome. and nations and languages should serve him. Now the word "serve," oh. it's it's serve, not worship. If you check the oh, the, what's, it awesome. called? What's, what's, what's it called? What's the Greek Old Testament called? What's Aramaic, it, the Aramaic uh, is pilach, but in certain Greek yeah. versions, duoleo. Yeah, uh huh. Even though other versions it's la trevo or la treo. No, I'm gonna bury them. It's okay, but just keep mm -hmm. going. So the word in. there, even in the Greek Septuagint, Sam Shimon, uh, oh, is oh, serve, oh, not worship. Ah, uh, so, uh, so I see. So yeah. So okay. So are they done with that? Because uh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna bury Muhammad. Well, he's already buried. I can't bury him anymore. He's in hell. You can't bury okay. him anymore, man. He's okay. already yeah. Uh number one. Number but he's one. his body's preserved though. Okay. Number one. Let's foresee what Rashi says. Who's the son of man? Can you go to Chabad.org? Yes. Look what he okay. says, okay? And I'm going to show that the word serve, Pirach Aramaic, is the worship given to God throughout the Aramaic portion of Daniel. And that Duleo is to be defined by its context, meaning that, yes, Duleo can mean just service. But in this context, it's the same Duleo given to the Most High. 
Therefore, Muhammad is being served in the same way that his fake God Allah is served. So they just committed shirk. And furthermore, the Quran says Allah allows no one to share in his dominion. But they just said Muhammad shares in his dominion. Yes, guys, keep bearing Muhammad. He's crying in hell because of your blasphemies. Now, now this is Chabad.org. This is who? Who is this? Is this? Rashi. This, Rashi, is Rashi. Right? this is from Kabad, so they know that you're not quoting a Christian source, right? No, this is not Christian interpretation, man. What does Rashi say the one like the Son of Man is? All right, so Rashi says that the one like the Son of Man is the King Messiah. So an anti-Christian rabbinic Jew has no choice but to admit, yeah, this is King Messiah, but it's not Jesus. Yeah, anybody but Jesus. But it is about the Messiah, not about some Arab stone-kissing pagan. Correct. I see. Hmm. So now let's go back to Daniel 7, 14. They're saying in the Greek, so now notice they abandoned the Aramaic. They went to Greek. Isn't it yes. ironic? Now yes. let me show you how wicked and demonic these Muslims truly are because they are of their father, the devil, liar, murder, until they repent, and we hope they repent. They will complain that we don't have Jesus' words in his mother tongue. We have Jesus' words in Greek, and yet he spoke Aramaic. Mm -hmm. But now they run to the Greek of Daniel instead of to the Aramaic of Daniel. Mm -hmm. You can't make this stuff up. Yeah, you can't. You, you understand, right? <laughs> yes. Oh, hey, uh, New Testament, you don't have Jesus' words in Aramaic. It's a Greek translation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that we have Daniel in Aramaic, they run to a Greek translation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up dude yeah okay but now if you bring up daniel 7 let's go with it let's go with the fact that the greek translation of pilach because the aramaic it's pilach is duleo or dulevo because the greeks like to say dulevo all right mm -hmm. now if you show us the screen because i don't want to just look at you brother we need the bible bro it's bible dude oh man, okay yeah okay okay fine, fine bible fine. man all right, we got the Bible right here, man. Yeah, but we don't see it on the screen, bro. Oh, excuse me, my bad. That's my point. You ain't got it, though. There All right. Go. So they're saying that the Greek rendering of should serve him is duleo or dulevo, meaning serve but not worship. This, again, shows their dishonesty because if they're going to go with the Greek, number one, in the context, this duleo is the same duleo given to the Most High in verse 27. Because if they're going to be consistent, the Greek translation of Daniel uses the term serve both for the Son of Man and the Ancient of Days, who's the Most High. If you go yep. to 27, you'll see it. Yep, right here. You're telling your slow mode is off, so I don't know if they want you to put slow mode, but anyway. Okay, now watch here. It says, the saints of the Most High, his kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom, and all the men shall serve him. The same service given to the Most High is the same service given to the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. You with me there? Yes, sir. And in the particular Greek versions of Daniel 7, 14, and 27, it's dulevo. But beyond that, they didn't tell you that there are other Greek versions that don't use the word dulevo. dulevo. They use latrevo, latruo. Latruo best corresponds to Pilach. The word Latruo is the word used for the worship given to God alone. Because in Matthew 4.10, Jesus says to Satan, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord God and Latruo him only. Give him Latruo alone. Why didn't they mention that? Hmm. Why didn't they mention that in the Greek copies of Daniel, you have two variant readings. You have one reading that says duleo or dulevo, but in the mm -hmm. context, that same duleo that's given to the Son of Man is given to the Most High in 27, meaning yeah. he's being served the same way that the Most High is being served, and that's worship. But beyond that, there's the other reading that in Daniel 7, 14 and 27, it's not duleo or dulevo, it's latruvo or latruo, which is the worship given to God alone, as Jesus himself confirms in Matthew 4, 10, when he says to Satan, depart from me, away from me, Satan, away from me, Muhammad's father, away from me, Muhammad's daddy, 
For it's written, you shall worship the Lord your God and la truvo him, la truvo him. Now, Everett, if you're more man than your mother, can you come up and quote John 5, 30 and Acts 2, 22 in debate here live against me, Everett, if you're more bold than your mother was? But anyway, mm. that buries them. Now, beyond that, let's bury them a little further. Are we ready? Yes. This son of man reigns forever, right? That's right. Now, can you open up your Quran, El Quran, El Karim? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. They just said that Allah is a shirker and Allah committed shirk because he now made Muhammad, this maggot, a sinner that the Quran itself says is a sinner, who was under the feet of Jesus, his partner in the dominion, even though the Quran says Allah has no partner in his dominion. So if you open up the Quran, El Quran, El Karim, you're going to go to chapter 17, verse 111. 17, 111. Now, Everett, don't be scared like mommy was in Iran when she did little muta. Come up and quote Acts 2.22 and John 5.30 against me. I'm going to use those passages to again prove that Allah, Satan, and Muhammad is in hell on the feet of Jesus. But we know you're not going to come up. Anyway, now read for us 17.111. All right. So 17.111, it says... And say, all the praises and thanks be to Allah, who has not begotten a son and who has no partner in his dominion. But the Son of Man is the partner of the Ancient of Days. Mm. And they said that's Muhammad, right? Yeah, they say it's Muhammad. So they just said Muhammad committed shirk and Muhammad's God, Satan, committed shirk because Muhammad is his partner forever and ever. Finish it, though, and I'll give you another one. Oh, man, finish it off. It's already finished, man, but okay, let's keep going, man. Nor is he, nor he is low to have a helper and magnify him with all magnificence. Now go to chapter 25, verse 2. You see how when they try to butcher the Bible, the God of the Bible butchers them and their religion? Yes. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. 25 verse 2, it says, he to, he to whom belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth, and who has begotten no son, and for whom there is no partner in the dominion. Wait, he, he has what? He has not a single partner in dominion. No, 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 no. Daniel said Muhammad is going to be Allah's partner. What are you talking about? Mm, I'll finish no. it because I'm going to show you that means they corrupted the Quran. So Muslims, mm. you just proved you corrupted the Quran. Shame on you, you exactly. dirty, pagan, stone exactly. kisser. You need to repent. Why? Finish it and I'll explain why. He has created everything and has measured it exactly according to its due measurements. Now, if Daniel is saying Muhammad is a partner with Allah and his kingdom because Muhammad and Allah will rule forever, that means this cannot be from Muhammad. Mm. Chapter 25, verse 2, chapter 17, verse 111 cannot be from Muhammad because Muhammad would have said, I am the partner of Allah in his dominion. He and I reign together. The dominion is mine and his because I'm his partner mm. and I rule over heaven and earth and everything in between with Allah, which means he would have never uttered these words of the Quran. Mm. How dare you change the words of Muhammad and make him a liar and idolater when he went around saying, I am that son of man and I reign with Allah forever and the dominion heavens and the earth are mine. Shame on you, you pagans, to twist the words of Muhammad. Wow. Now, did Rashi agree this is about King Messiah? Yes. That's what he literally let's said. See, let's see if Jesus agrees it's about him. Right? Uh -huh. Yep. Now, would you rather take Jesus' words, who left the tomb empty, who's alive, or Muhammad, who's dead, buried under the feet of Christ, who's become maggot food for 1,400 years? Let's see. You know, Mark 14, 61, 62. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to give you a series of verses. Line them up. You ready? Okay. So, so make Mark 14, 61 to 62. Okay. Then you're going to put in, you're going to do a semicolon. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Then you're going to do Matthew 16, 27 to 28. Right. Then you're going to do a semicolon and Matthew 25, 31 of 46, just these passages. And I'm going to go off screen for a minute as you read them. All right. Cause I got to, 
say hi to someone, but just, you know, it's not. Which is really quick. You said Matthew 25. Oh, yeah. I know. Versus 31, 46. I'm going to show you how this now is going to backfire against Muhammad. Yep. Okay, guys. He's going to read it for you guys. I can put the camera on, but go ahead. I'll just go ahead. You read it. Read All slowly. Right. According to Jesus, who's the son of man of Daniel? According to Jesus. Not Muhammad who's dead. Jesus who's alive. The Quran yes. even agrees. Isa's alive. Alayhi salam. All right. So Mark chapter 14. Verses 61 to 62. But he remained silent and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Now, here's just a little nugget here while, while until Sam gets back. Notice how in with Muslim arguments, they try to uh, make a distinction or differentiate son of man and son of God. Is Jesus the son of God or is he the son of man? Jesus just told you they're one and the same. The son of God is the son of man. He says the same thing in John chapter five. So whenever they try to make up this false dichotomy, either Jesus is the son of God or the son of man. No, he's both. And he just says it right here. And the he son said, of God is the son of man. He's going to say it again in Matthew 16, 27. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Matthew chapter 16, verse 27 to 28. For the son of man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his father. Wait, wait, and the glory of who? The glory of his father. So Jesus speaking, he's the son of man and he comes in the glory of his father. So that means he's the son of God, right? That's right. There you go. Exactly. Says it again. And then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Now, guys, did you catch it? Mm -hmm. Jesus, the God of Paul, Paul, the apostle of Jesus, Paul, whose sandal Muhammad wasn't good enough to lick, because Muhammad is a filthy, immoral pedophile in comparison to Paul, this holy slave of Christ, which is why Paul is alive with Jesus and Muhammad is dead in hell. And I'm saying that because the Muslims are attacking Paul in the comment section. Of course. Of we course. have to attack Paul, we're going to bury Muhammad, because Muhammad cannot even lick Paul's sandals in terms of holiness and purity, and yet Paul was just a servant of Jesus. 100%. Now, let me back to this issue. Did you guys catch it? Here it says, Jesus claimed to be not only the Son of Man, but also the son of God, because he's coming the glory of his father. And he also claims to own the angels. And he claims that he will be coming to repay everyone according to their deeds and that it is his kingdom. Right? Right. Now, before you go to Matthew 25, I want you to see 27 again. For the son of man is going to come with his angels. So mm -hmm. Jesus owns the angels. Yes. And the glory of his father. So God is his father. So Jesus claimed to be the son of God, son of man. And he, Jesus, will come to repay each person according to what he has done. Now, mm -hmm. go to the top. Put in Isaiah 40, verse 10. All right. Yeah. You don't need to change it. Just put Isaiah 40, verse 10. And you go back. And then we're going to read Matthew 25. We're going to see how even the Quran admits that Jesus just claimed to be God, though he's not the father. You guys disrespect Paul, we're going to disrespect your prophet. You disrespect Jesus, we're going to disrespect your prophet. Because your Quran told you. In chapter 6, verse 108, Muslims. Do not mock those whom they worship in ignorance, as if we're ignorant. Lest they mock Allah. Do not worship mock those that they worship. Lest they mock Allah without knowledge. You're told by your Quran, do not insult other people's gods. Because when insult your God and your prophet. So you disrespect Paul, I'm going to disrespect Muhammad. You disrespect Jesus, Allah's God and judge, I'm going to disrespect, disrespect your God. Respect your book, practice what you preach, so we don't insult you guys. That's why I insult you, because you have no shame. You insult Paul, the holy slave of Christ, and Muhammad is under the feet of Paul, and Jesus, Muhammad's God and destroyer. We will embarrass your prophet and your fake God if you don't respect your religion. Practice yes. chapter 6. Verse 108. Now, coming back to... Yeah, you said Isaiah 48. Isaiah 40, verse 10. Pick it 40, up, loser. Man. I'm doing three things at one time. You can't even keep up with me. 40, verse 10. Man, bro. Isaiah 40, verse 10. Right? A different level. All right. 
Boom. All right. I like it. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 10. Behold, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. Wait, yes. who's coming to repay wow. people and reward people for what they're doing? The Here. Lord Yahweh. But go back, Matthew 16, 27. Jesus says, that's me. Yeah. Yeah. He says, the son of man is coming with his angels in the glory of his father, and he will repay each person according to what he has done. So you're telling me Jesus in Matthew claims to be the Lord Yahweh who comes to repay people? Yeah. yeah. But he's not the father. He's the son of the father? Correct. Okay. That's why we're Trinitarians. Now, Matthew 25 is a long one. So take your time to read. Irish, you need to shut the pie hole and listen, Irish pub, and go find you a bar at two in the afternoon and drink your life away, Irish pub. Shut the lip. Zip the lip .com. No one cares for your opinion. Zip it. Anyway, now Matthew 25, 31 to 46. Again, read slowly because I'm going to show you how Muhammad is a plagiarist. He stole the words of Jesus and put in the mouth of Allah. But in doing that, he proved Jesus claimed to be God. You're going to see what I, what I mean in a minute. Yeah. All right. So this is Matthew 25. It says, uh, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Hmm. And he will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Now, pay attention. This is Jesus speaking. Yeah. He says, he, the son of man, will sit on his glorious throne and the angels will come with him. All the nations will stand before Jesus. That includes all you Muslims, all the Arabs, all the Muslims, and Muhammad. And Jesus will take the righteous, put them on his right, and the wicked on his left. Now notice what else Jesus says about himself. This is the day of judgment. Keep reading. Yep. Then the king will say to those on, on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father. Pause. And notice he's the son of God again. Yes. The son of man is the son of God because he says, my father. So this is Jesus, son of God, right? That's right. But then he says he's the king of the day of judgment. Mel Melek Yomadin. Mm -hmm. Melek Yomadin. Mm -hmm. well, yes, yeah. Jesus said, I am the king of the day of judgment, not your Allah. Yeah. So what is he going to say to the right? Pay attention. Come, you who are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed They you? called him Lord. Mm -hmm. So notice in this teaching of Jesus, he's the son of man of Daniel. He comes with the angels. He sits on his glorious Christian comedy channel. I just called you out five times, dude. Stop manifesting and barking because of the demon. Christian comedy channel. I'm glad you called yourself a comedy channel. Hold on. Here is my Skype. After this, call me so I can destroy your satanic God and expose you as a son of the devil. Mm -hmm. Stop barking, dude. Come so I can bury your fake God because you are a comedian. You're a stand-up comedian, but sitting down. Now, coming back to the issue. Notice he says he's the son of man of Daniel. He sits on the throne of glory. The angels are his. All the nations will stand before him. He will then determine where they will go, whether they will live or be punished. God is his father. He is the king and he is the Lord, Rabb. He is Rabbul Alameen, the Lord of all beings. How can the Muslim Isa claim this? Yeah. Because they call him Lord. So they know this is the Lord, Malik Yomadin, the king of the day of judgment. He's not the father. He's the son of God. He owns the angels and he determines our destiny. Now keep reading. All right. 
Let's see here. Where was I at? Oh, yeah. So then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them. Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. So Jesus saying, when you do acts of love, acts of kindness to believers in me, you're doing it to me? That's what he says, yes. Uh, but now notice what he's going to say to the left. And you're going to see now how Muhammad stole the words of Jesus. And in doing so, he proved that Jesus claimed to be God in a minute. But now keep reading. All right. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they will answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, truly, I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Mm. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Okay, now, guys, pay attention to what you said. The ones on the left, I will say to them, I was hungry, you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, you didn't give me to drink. I was naked, you didn't clothe me. And then they say, when did we see you, Lord, hungry and thirsty? And when you didn't do it to the least of my brother, you didn't do it to me. Now, watch what Muhammad did. Now, I just sent him the link. This is called Hadith Qudsi, where Muhammad is narrating what Allah will say. Now, tell me if this sounds familiar. I sent it to you in private, if you want to open yeah. it up. Hadith Qudsi. And I gave you guys the link at sunnah.com. And the Muslims come and refute us. Please stick to the topic. Don't insult so I don't have to insult you. But you guys in the comment section, I'm seeing your insults. I'm warning you. Follow chapter 6, verse 108. You insult our Lord Jesus. You insult his holy blessed servants, Paul. We're going to do what the Quran told you we're going to do. Insult your God and your prophet. So respect your prophet. Come and ask your objections. Because we have the truth. Islam is a lie. Which is why Islam is under the feet of Jesus. Now, watch what Muhammad did with Jesus' words. Tell me if this sounds familiar. All right. So uh, let me zoom in some. On the authority of Abu Huraira. Right? Yep. You watch what happened. Who said that the messenger of Allah said, Allah will say on the day of resurrection, O oh, son of Adam, I fell ill and you visited me not. <laughs> You're laughing, huh? Hey, that sounds familiar. Where did we just read that? It's funny because we've been over this before and it's literally the same reaction at the same point every time with me. It still catches me, man. You see, that's why. But yeah. it's not right here. It's going to be second nature. And yeah. then you're going to use it. Yeah, yeah. It's a Isn't it clear as day Muhammad stole the words of Jesus and put it in Allah's mouth? Yes, clear as day. But you don't understand what that meant, right? Muhammad oh. is admitting that Jesus is claiming to be God because only God can say these things. That's right. Thank That's you, right. Muhammad. We appreciate wow. you. This is excellent. Um, he will say, <laughs> Oh, Lord, and how should I visit you? When you are the Lord of the worlds, he will say, did you not know that my servant so-and-so had fallen ill and you visited him not? Did you not know that had you visited him, you would have found me with him? Oh, son of Adam, I asked you for food and you fed me not. He will say, oh, Lord, and how should I feed you when you are the Lord of the worlds? He will say, did you not know that my servant so-and-so asked you for food and you fed him not? Did you not know that had you fed him, you would have surely found that with me? 
Oh, son of Adam, I asked you to give me drink and you gave me no drink. He will say, oh, Lord, how should I give you drink when you're the Lord of the worlds? He will say, my servant so-and-so asked you to give him to drink and you gave him not to drink. Had you given him to drink, you would have surely found that with me. It was related by Muslims, so Sahih Muslim. Hadith Qudsi, man, oh man. So Muhammad stole the words of Jesus. And when he stole the words of Jesus, he put in the mouth of Allah, showing that only God can say the things that Jesus said, thereby proving that the historical Jesus claimed to be God Almighty, That's even though he's right. not the Father. That's right. Wow. You're kidding me. That's what Muhammad just did? That's what Muhammad just did, man. Everybody, I want you guys to have that reference in your pockets. Hadith Qudsi, right? Because that is, that's nuts right there, man. Hold on, I'm saying, I'm making sure. Because I didn't, I don't think I saved it last time. But this time I'm saying. Yeah, no, save it, man. Save this because it, it shows you Muhammad is a plagiarist. Yeah, yep. He's a plagiarist, brother. He, he took the words of, but in so doing, he ends up confirming that Jesus claimed to be God. And they say, no, no, nowhere does Jesus claim God in the Synoptic Gospels. According to your Quran, Jesus claimed to be God. In fact, let's reinforce that. The Quran has Allah doing what Jesus claims to do. The Quran has Allah doing what Jesus claims to do. Did you catch it? I mm -hmm. sent you the link. Post, uh, I posted it several times. Hadith Qudsi. Anyway, did, here, yep. let me see if I can do it again because they're asking for it. I already several things. Yeah, I, I, put it, I put it in the comment section and everything. All right, there it goes. Okay. Remember, Jesus says he rides the clouds with the angels to come and judge, right? That's right. That's right. Do me a favor then. Open up the Quran again. Watch here. Jesus says he will come with the clouds of heaven to judge and repay, yep. and he'll come with the angels, right? Yep. Open up chapter 2 of the Quran, verse 210. Mm. Now, just to let you know, Sam, we got a couple customers if you... Uh, sure, yeah, as as long as they can... Look, look, guys, and I'm on record on this. Yep. When you insult the servants of Christ and blaspheme Jesus, I'm going to insult you and curse you out, just like your Quran said will do, 6108. If you don't insult the Bible, insult the Lord, insult his slaves, and bully us, we can have respectful conversation. And I have plenty of sessions where I've shown I can speak patiently. Do not insult if you respect your God. Chapter 6, verse 108 says, do not insult those that they worship, lest in ignorance they insult Allah. Yep. Don't do it. Your Quran told you not to do it. If you do, that means you have no respect for your prophet or God. But anyway, go yeah. to chapter 2, verse 210. Yeah, so yeah, guys, it's chapter 2, verses 210. Okay? Chapter 2, verses 210. It's on the screen. You know, all of this is rewatch value. If you miss something, we're repeating it. But if you miss the, you know, us repeating it, you can just rewind. All right. Yep. Okay. So here we go. It says, do they then wait for anything other than Allah? Other than that Allah should come to them in the shadows of the clouds and the angels? Who comes to them? Allah comes to them. And Allah, Allah comes, comes to them? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. With the angels? With the angels and the clouds, Samuel. But Jesus said, he's the son of man who's the son of God who come with the angels on the clouds. Mm -hmm. Now go to chapter 89, verses 21 to 23. All right. By the way, you guys want me to shock you? You want me to show you Muhammad plagiarized the Lord's pray prayer? You want to be shocked? After you read 89, 21 to 23, I'm going to show you. Elm. No, you can come and try to refute me and I'll destroy your objections. But if you insult, I'm going to insult you. So don't make excuses. Now, chapter 89, verses 21 and 23. Who will come on the day of judgment with his angels, according to the Quran? I see. Nay, when the earth is ground to powder and your Lord comes with the angels in robes. All the way to 23. And he Sorry, go ahead. And Sorry. hell will be brought near that day. And on that day will man remember. But how will that remembrance avail him? Wait, 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 hold on. 
The Quran says the Jews were expecting, and the Quran testifies, Allah will come with the shadows of the clouds with the angels. Muhammad's Lord will show up with angels on that day, the day of judgment, right? Yep. That was chapter 89, verse 21, 23, chapter 2, verse 210. But Jesus says he's the son of man who will come with his angels on the clouds of heaven, manifesting glory of his father on the day of judgment to judge. And he is the Lord of that day and the king. Yep. And you're telling me that Jesus did not claim to be God. Yep. Now, hmm. final one before you bring him up. You want to see Muhammad? Muhammad plagiarize the Lord's Prayer? Yeah. There it is. I just sent you the link. Guys, yeah. Muhammad took the Lord's Prayer and butchered it. Watch here. Look. Right here. Front of your eyes. I gave you the link. Here it is, y'all. Save that link. Use it in the future, brother. Yes, sir. <laughs> <clears throat> so it says here, I heard the messenger of Allah say, if any of you is suffering from anything or his brothers is suffering, he should say, our Lord is Allah who is in the heaven. Holy is thy name. Does that sound familiar, dude? <laughs> but did you notice the difference? He doesn't call him father. Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep yeah. Uh, what, your command reigns supreme. In the heavens and the earth. In other words, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Uh huh. As your mercy in the heaven, make your mercy in the earth. Uh, forgive us our sins and our errors. Ma, that sounds familiar, man. Where did you read that before? It's crazy. Well, you are the Lord of good men. Send down mercy from your mercy and remedy and, and, re and remedy. And remedy from your remedy on this pain so that it is healed up. Yeah, but brother, it's daif. It says it's daif. But uh, number no. one, daif means uh, it passed. It's not forged. You can't get rid of it. Mm. Daif, brother. Sunan Abu Dawud. Yeah. You're telling me this religion is not cut and paste? Copy? Copy, play, cut, paste, man. All right, brother. Lord willing, I hope that answered Daniel 2 and Daniel 7, right? Definitely. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. And, and to the glory of God, we got 2000 people in here uh, while you, we were going over that. We had about 1700 folks watching that. So, guys, um, man, we, we got the wisdom here. We got the knowledge. Glory to God. Make sure that you guys go back, rewatch, learn the argument, know how to refute it and to answer it. Study it. Take notes. Go over it and over and over it so that it becomes second nature. And, you know, you'll be able to, to share the truth. By the power of God, all right? So with that being said, we have guests. We got some customers. Let's up. see who will be coming up. So we got, uh, I see a couple of you guys. I see Abu Khalil, and I Just see- sure they don't flash you with a video. Why? Yep, this is why I got a little method here. Uh, I'm gonna need you one, guys. I need you guys to show your cameras so that I can see that you guys are not trolls. So that's step one. I need to see your cameras before I bring you up. Dawood. Khalil and Talha, I need you guys to show your cameras. Talha, that's the gentleman that was coming. You, this is why he calls himself Christian Comedy 2. Guys, did you hear me give a shout out to Christian Comedy 2? Christian Comedy 2, you suck as a stand-up comedian. You're worse as a sitting, sitting down comedian. I gave you my Skype, Benny underscore Malik 3. After this, contact me. I'll go live and destroy your fake God that you worship and show you that the triumph God lives. Stop manifesting, dude. Go ahead. All right. All right. So everybody wants to join. I need to see your camera. Right. So, Taha, I saw your camera. I need you to do something for me, Taha. I need you to throw up a thumbs up in the camera. You too, Abu. Abu Khalil, throw your thumbs up. All right. Let me, let me see the. Okay. I see the. Let me see the thumbs up, Taha. All right. Got it. All right. You guys are real people. Okay, All right, so let's bring up uh, Khalil because he was first. Thank Khalil, you. you don't have to be on camera if you don't want to anymore. Thanks for showing it. Oh, my man. I like that beard, bro. All right. What's up, Abu oh. Khalil? Can you hear us? The father of Khalil, the friend, father of the friend. That means he has a son named Khalil. Khalil Allah. Go ahead, Abu. We can't hear you. 
I don't know. Is it me or yes? Dawood Abu Khalil. Do you hear? I don't hear anything. No. Right. Dawood, can you hear us? Abu Mak. All right, so hold on. Let me go ahead and remove this one. You got a couple of up here. Oh, there he goes. That's him right there. But can Liz. you hear us? No, we can't hear you. We can't we hear can. you, bro. Can't hear you. He's going to pull over. All right. All right, so in the meantime, let's go ahead and bring up Talha. 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 What's up, Talha? Go ahead. Hey, how are you? What's up? Good, good, my friend. Go ahead, talk. Um, I would like to answer the question that you asked in Surah chapter. Which one? Uh, what, in which Allah says uh, that uh, uh, do they wait for, do they wait uh, uh, yeah. that I will show myself to them? Uh, which uh, Surah is this? No, it didn't say show myself. It says, do they wait for Allah to show up with the sh shadows of the clouds with the angels? Then the matter. Yeah, now, will, that's what's chapter. the chapter? What's well, the chapter? Take, take care easy. I'll give it. Take care easy. Take care easy. Surah Al-Baqarah 210. And if you read no, the commentators, Ibn Kathir. So, the so Jews, what was your claim? What was your claim? The claim is that what your God, Allah, is said to do is what the Bible says Jesus will do. Jesus comes on the clouds with the angels, not your Allah. Seriously, brother. Here it says that the... Uh, mm, the people, uh, I mean, atheists, they don't believe in God. Uh, who says, show me God, where is God? No, no, Talha, this way? Talha yeah. you didn't hear me. See, this is why I pretend you're listening to me so we don't have a fight. I told yes, you, yes. Ibn Kathir gives you the context. It's the Jews. The Jews are telling the Muslims, we'll wait for Allah to show up to see which of us is right. And so the response is, well, if Allah shows up, then the case is closed because the Jews from their Bible and the Christians knew that God is coming to judge the world. And we quoted to you chapter 89 verses 21 to 23. It says, your Lord will come with angels ranks and ranks on that day of judgment. So on the day of judgment, Allah comes to judge. So why are you disagreeing with the Quran? Well, chapter 89 verse 21 and 23. I thought it's got. When, I thought you were listening, brother. My brother in humanity. Oh, one minute, one minute. Okay. Or, okay. Yeah. I hope you understood what my point was, so you can at least address it. I don't understand what are you what are you asking? Can I repeat the point? Okay. Do you agree? Let's see if you get it. That according uh -huh. to Quran, Allah will judge on the day of judgment. Yeah, of course. And he'll judge everyone? Everyone. Yes. So will Muhammad judge on the day of judgment? Judge mankind? How kind of judgment? He will judge you and say you're going to hell or going to heaven. No, no. It's in the hands of Allah. Okay. Allah will decide, not Thank Muhammad. You. you just proved Jesus is God because we just quoted Jesus saying he comes as the Lord. <clears throat> Rab, he comes as Malik Muhammadin, the king of the day of judgment, and he will determine you go to hell or heaven. How could you, guys, you do you know the better now? Do you know? Yeah, we hear you. All right, thanks. I'll be quiet. Go ahead, guys. Yeah. Right. So do you agree that Jesus will do that according to Jesus' words? Bro, bro, listen to me, listen to me. I got you. You got um, me. You, you slammed me. Yeah. Very good. You just uh, this, this this question was answered by I don't know his name, but... Uh, yeah, Bart Ehrman, uh, right? Uh, uh, Allah's messenger, right? No, da Dawa. Uh, dunia. Yeah, okay. right? Answer. Don't wait for Dawa. Yeah. Answer for me. Uh, there, uh, judgment, there are many types of judgment. Uh, okay. On the day of judgment, Jesus, Jesus will come and, uh, uh, and say to the Christian that I didn't say you to worship me. Tala. This refers to that. Uh, Repeat Jesus will not... Tala because you did not even address it and I'm going to bury Dawa for misquoting the Bible. Repeat what my argument was because you think you're listening. What was my you're argument? You're saying Jesus is God. No, brother in humanity. He will judge. Repeat my argument. What was my argument when we quoted Jesus? You you said that uh, Jesus will judge uh, people 
Yes. Uh, that's why he is God. Let me show you the verses again where Jesus says, I, the Son of Man, will come in the glory of my Father with my angels to repay everyone according to what they've done. You want to see it this again? This is in your Bible, not in Quran. Exactly. That was our point, that in our Bible, Jesus claimed to be God because he says things that even your Quran says. It's only contradicted, God. bro. It's contradicted. Contradicted. What's your next question, Tal? What is your next question? You have another question. Good. No, no, we will we will answer that now. You didn't answer it now because in Matthew 16, 27, 28, la la, can I shake my it's, head? It's, I, I got a few uh, Quran, questions to answer, brother, if you've got a chance. Yeah, okay. Well, this guy, tell if he wants to stop, we can go to you. I don't know. Okay. okay. He's not understanding the issue. Hopefully you do. No problem. Hey, listen, you guys are obviously highly intelligent, man. Like, I, I respect what you guys are doing. I'm saying, like, even though I'm, I'm Muslim, we still can have respect. So I'm not trying to come on here and argue it like that. Oh, you guys hear me well, right? Yeah. Yes, okay, cool. So listen, right? So from my perspective, it's very simple, right? I'm a layman. I don't, I'm not a scholar. I don't know that much Arabic. I don't know that many verses. I'm just some person that want to worship God, regardless of what the religion is, right? Meaning that from my understanding that there's one guy in the beginning, the, the creator, correct? You guys you agree with that? It depends on what Reg you mean. By regardless, if you say that it was three as a trinity, or we believe that as one, we both believe that the creation started with, with what you got. So, what word do you want to use for God so we could both could be on the same page? Abu Khalil. Abu Khalil. I know you want yeah. to have a respectful conversation. When you say one God, even then you're going to have to define what you mean. What do you mean one God? What does it mean for God to be one? So we believe that there's everything is a part of the creation and the law is the creator. However, I don't want to argue a point because I'm trying to get to another point. Okay, get but, to your point. Yeah. So listen, right? So there is a beeline from the creation from Adam all the way to the end. Put Muhammad to the side for one second, right? There's a beeline if you wanted to learn religion and worship God. How where we think God is, the one God, the creator, right? Yeah. Whoever created Adam and the angels and the heavens and the earth. If you want to worship that God, that being, right? And you were alive during the time of Noah, you had to follow Noah, right? If you were alive, alive during the time of Abraham, you had to follow Abraham and no and, and so on and Moses and so on, right? So so my point is that um if you follow those prophets of those times, their message is very similar. It may be different languages, different dialects, different times of the earth, but the but the message is clear. Worship God because you know, Abraham destroyed the idols, and Moses, of course, had to go against Pharaoh, who was saying that he was God, and X, Y, and Z. So listen, so, so my question is, my question is, we can have a beeline with all of the prophets saying worship one God, whether it be from Abraham down to Moses down to Jesus, right? And what I'm saying is that, do you have the evidence for those prophets saying worship the Trinity, worship three gods as one? Number one, number one the God that these prophets told you to worship is not your God Allah of the Quran because if you're going to talk to a Christian and I show you from the Old Testament that the God they worship is not Allah according to them your Allah would be Satan would you accept so 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 hear me out right no, 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 no. you want to engage but me I'm, I'm trying no no I'm trying to give you my answer from what you just said good. take me as a person that I, I want to embrace your religion good right let's go to and, my body and I'm saying that, yeah, I'm, I'm saying put the Quran and, and Muhammad aside for a second. I'm That's asking cool. you a question about Christianity, right? And I'm saying, and, and, and mind you, brother, I'm not being smart or nothing. I'm, I'm actually just talking to you, right? I'm saying to you, if I want to embrace your religion, yeah. but I've studied, I've, I've seen how, you guys ever heard the Hadith of the man who killed 99 people? Yeah, that shows the, the perverter of justice. Yes, we know, but get to the Right, point. but no, no, no. My point is that in that hadith, that man is looking for yes. the, the the correct religion. So I'm saying, look at me like that. I'm asking a Christian, answer you how? Me. Go okay, go answer. Good. If I start from the Old Testament, the God yeah. that the Israelites worship would be the Father, would be the Messenger of Yahweh and the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to show that to you very easily. And then I then right. go to the New Testament and I see that. Hmm, the father sent jesus jesus is that messenger of the father who is worshiped in the old testament and we have the holy spirit so there's consistency with all the new testament not with the crop now i'm going to prove it to you 
Now you want an answer, right? Now let me show you who they worship. It wasn't the God you worship. So I'm just going to go to the Bible. Look, but you keep saying the God I worship. I'm asking you a genuine yeah, well, question okay, of Khalil. Abraham and Noah and Moses. Go ahead. Khalil, you want me to answer? You want to talk over me? Then I'm going to bulldoze you. Let's not play games. Oh. You are a Muslim. So, but, 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 but how am I playing games? Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Cut me off again so I can't answer you. Go ahead. Cut me off again. Bro, I'm being respectful, bro. Go ahead and answer your question. I appreciate it. Genesis 16, 7 to 14. Take it easy because I'm going to show you why. You need to change your name and no longer think you're an Arab with an Arab name. Genesis 16, 7 to 14. Let's see who Hagar, whom you think is the mother of Ishmael, and answers Muhammad worship. If you want to open up for him, show him. All right. Oh. Here. Well, why are you trying to insult me, brother? I'm I'm, yeah, I'm being respectful. Brother humanity. Can we get to the text and not uh, appeal? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't yes. want to be insulted. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, too. Genesis 16, 7 and 14. It says, The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. I'm sorry, so that they cannot yeah, be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has listened to your affliction. He shall be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against everyone and everyone's hand against him. And he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing. For she said, truly, here I have seen him who looks after me. Therefore, the well was called Ber Lehi Roy. It lies between Kadesh and Bered. Now, so, did you hear who the angel is? Because I want to see if you're asking sincerely. That means you paid attention to what we just read. I don't think you knew what question I was asking. Did you yes, know what I, a question I was asking? Yes, what was my question? Yeah. What was Can my I question, brother? You? Talk over me again, brother. Go ahead one more time. I'm, I'm asking you, brother. I said, what was my question? Do you know what my question was? Yes. Can I show you from the Bible, if you're seeking, that they worship the Trinity? Correct? My question was, show me where Abraham, Noah, and Moses worship the Trinity. Yes. That's, that's, that, that's, 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 that's my question. Right? That's what that I just That was my said. question. Okay. Yeah, okay, great. Now, did you read Genesis 16, 7 to 14? Who did Hagar call God? Who does she call God? See, you just proved my point because the people in the comment section think you're asking sincerely. I see through your facade. Because if you're listening, you would hear. Bro, you why do you keep insulting me, man? I, have I insulted you at all? Yes, you are because you're pretending I, to ask a question. How did I insult you? Because you're pretending to ask a question and you're not listening. But I'm not pretending. Have I insulted you at Who all? Did no. she call her God here? Let's see. Go ahead. Go to the verse. We I'll just read it. I have not insulted you not one time. Though. That's what I'm asking, bro. Yeah, guy, all all like the it's so, been a million percent respect on my okay. end. I don't know what's yeah, the yeah, problem. Yeah, so the problem here, guys, the, pro the problem here is that, you know, Sam is saying, we, you know, we just read, you know, through some, a passage. And right. said, if you were listening, you would have been able to, you know, answer correctly. You know what I'm saying? Hey, same, same. Hello, hello, same. Not listening, but, so. but wait, wait. It's still my turn. But. My, my, my question was that you can follow a beeline through the prophets and see what they taught. And when you go through the prophet stories in the Bible, in the Bible alone, you see them telling people to worship one God. You don't see them teaching yes. the Trinity or well, worshiping well, multiple well, gods. That's what I'm asking. asking. That's, that's, you that's, where your miscon that's where your misconception is. So, so show me. Where Abraham said worship this, well, this God, is what God. You just up. only show uh, Holy Spirit, uh, Jesus, and the Father. The, you guys saw this guy's not listening, right? You see, on, he's, a fake. he's not asking so, real questions, and he's yeah, appealing so, to something. No, no, I'm saying you're no, getting no, upset. No, I'm only asking no, a question, no, brother. No, Honestly, me? yes, I can hear you very well. Thank you, brother. Okay. Yes, I can hear you well. Hagar worship as God right here. Yeah, this is what the question is. Hag according Hagar is not Abraham, though. Listen, Dawood, Dawood. Okay. According to the passage here, 
-hmm. So the person who's recording this is Moses. This is in the Torah. So Moses is recording the, all of this. So notice it's not it's not it's not just Hagar that's acknowledging that the angel of the Lord here is God, but mm -hmm. Moses himself. Okay, is that your only proof for oh, here, Moses and Abraham? Abraham? Because this he's judge, jury, and executioner. Now show him Jacob. Go to Genesis 31, 10 to 13 and stop playing the victim. Let's see now if you're going to pay attention. Genesis 31, 10 to 13. Who did Jacob worship as God? Genesis 31, 10 to 13. Now listen and answer and don't do the tap dance. Let's see. All right. So Genesis. Genesis yeah. So it says, in the breeding season of the flock, I lifted up my eyes and saw in a dream that the goats that mated with the flock were striped, spotted, and mottled. Then the angel of God said to me in a dream, Jacob, and I said, here I am. And he said, lift up your eyes and see all the goats that mate with the flock are striped, spotted, and mottled. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and made a vow to me. Now arise, go out from this land and return to the land of your kindred. Then Rachel and Leah answered and said to him, is there any portion of inheritance? Oh, now, before, yeah, before, reread it one more time so you can see who yep. just called himself the God of the house of God. Yep, so when absolutely. he answers the question, he can't say, well, what is it? Let's see. Yep, so verse 11, it says, Then the angel of God said to me in a dream. So the angel of God said to him in a dream, right? And then he says in verse 13, I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar and made a vow to me. Now arise, go out from this land, and return to the land of your kindred. Did you read this? I mean, Did you hear it? Yeah. Now, so Who I said, heard nothing about worshiping okay, the Trinity. So all like, angels are gods. Wait, wait. Okay. So, so, Did you hear Abu Did you hear the angel you? say? Did you hear the angel say to Jacob, "I am the God of Bethel"? Did you hear that or no? I am the God of Bethel. Sure. Yeah. Who said that? Let's see if you're listening. Whatever the angel, angel. whatever the angel, what you're talking about. Yes. Who said to yeah. Jacob, I'm the God of, the, of Bethel? An uh, angel. So you just admit this angel claimed to be God. Linguistically, that, that could be incorrect, though. So I'm not 100% sure I'll about the Hebrew, the Hebrew or whatever. I give you the Hebrew. Go ahead. Hebrew? I know. I already told you I'm a layman. I'm, I'm asking so as a layman. You're referring to linguistic when you don't know the language. So because I know this wasn't revealed in English. That's common sense. Open up the Hebrew for this guy because he's going to read the Hebrew for us because he's playing sure. games. Go to Bible. Oh, it's not a game. It's it's a question. Yeah, buddy, stop appealing to sympathy. Narcissists are famous for that. You are. I don't. Them. I don't know why you want to insult going me to look at, at the all. Hebrew, but it's cool. You're gonna parse the Hebrew because English is English. So again, again, you have not once showed me where any prophet yeah, taught a duality color? or trinity. Yeah. Not even once. Yeah, okay. Neither Good. one of these times. Good job, buddy. We but if you go to the stories of the prophets in the Bible, they all sh saying very the clearly, time, do not. The next guy. Do not, yeah. do not yeah. worship anything except God. Is that so in, in, incorrect to you guys? I want to show the. I want to show the Hebrew. The prophet didn't knew that God, his son. Did Abraham knew? See, this is uh, why did Abraham know? Hold on a second. Because you see, yeah. they don't. But Abraham has yeah, the patience. So hold on a second. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do, man. This is where my. It is. This. So, so, hey, hey, Dawu, can you? Yeah, uh, yes, sir. You, Go ahead, brother. Talking. Can you see the screen at all? I know, but I know you. I can't like, see the screen, but I believe what you say. Go ahead. Okay, so remember we're talking. You asked about the, the the linguistic side of this, right? I did. Yes. Yeah. So I appreciate you, bro, too. Being gotcha. respectful, man. I have the Hebrew. I have the Hebrew up here on the screen. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Hebrew on the screen. It says, and so Malik Ha Elohim. Malik is uh -huh. angel. Ha the right God Elohim right. is God. Okay. Right. So he says that he. So the angel says that he is the God. He's the God okay. that appeared to him and showed up to him at Bethel. Okay? Gotcha. So, so I appreciate he, that, brother. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. I may cut you off. I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You're, go ahead, go you're ahead. good. So, so that's I was just showing you. So it's not, it's not just I, I want you to have this perspective. 
because Moses is writing this in the Torah, right? So Moses right. is recollecting what happened with Jacob and what even no Jacob. So you have Moses who's even saying that the angel of the Lord is God himself. And you have right. Jacob who's believing that the angel of the Lord is God himself. Although is also distinct from Yahweh who sends him. Okay, I understand that point. So yeah. what I'm saying is that it seems a little conflicting when you go to the story of Abraham and he says, do not worship anything except for the one true God, correct? Like th those stories also are in the Bible. I'm, 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 I'm putting the Quran aside for a second. Yeah, I know. I'm talking I know. about the Bible only. It's, it's yeah, not yeah, yeah. conflicting. And here's, here's why it's not conflicting, bro. It's not okay, conflicting I'm listening to you. because it's not that they are worship the, the angel of the Lord is another God besides Yahweh. No, the, mm -hmm. the point is, is that Yahweh in the Bible throughout the scriptures is multi-personal. You have Yahweh, you have the angel of Yahweh, and you have the spirit of Yahweh. All three persons are united as, as the one God. That's what is shown throughout the Torah. That's what, that's right. what Sam was trying to show you today. Right. And that's, that's cool, bro. I appreciate that. So, so let me ask you the connection from you saying that, that there's... The, the multi-personal God, who taught Christians that? Like, like where did you get that creed from? Is that, like, put that together. Because on one side, you do see that there is a clear monotheistic Abrahamic religion. Like, that's clear, right? M Abraham taught that there, he broke the idols in y'all's story, in, in the Bible. He no. fought against there being idols. Yeah, no, that, for sure. That's not in our Bible. That's in the Quran. Yeah, that's a Quran. No, no, no. Abraham... The story of Abraham and his tribe with his father, that's in that's, yeah, that's in the Bible. The Bible. No, 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 sir. No, the story you guys don't have in the idols is not in our Bible. It's a Talmudic story that Muhammad thought was historical and he added in the Quran. But go ahead. Okay, so 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 explain to me what was Abraham teaching in the Bible, if you he don't just mind. Did. He just told you that the one God that Abraham worshipped is not one person. Mm -hmm. You keep thinking God is one person. So where do you get that? Where'd you get that creed from? Because it sounds like one person. Well, it, it starts in the beginning, man. Well, that's what that's what Sam is showing. Look, notice how we're in the book of Genesis. Uh -huh. Before Christianity is even formed, we're in the book of Genesis, the very first book of the entire Bible. And in so you saying every I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off, brother. No, no, keep going. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I apologize. Yeah, I'm just saying, in the book of Genesis, this is where it's established that God is three persons before okay, Christianity. Cool. All right, so quick question about that then. So if God was established as a triune God or at least multi-personal, then why was it an issue if Jesus was claiming to be God by, by the Jews? Very Good question. Easy. Go ahead, Sam. Yeah, go ahead. Very easy because it's one thing to say God is multi-personal. It's another thing for a man to show up in the flesh as a Jew and claim to be God in the flesh. That's why they were scandalized. So, the, so, so, so once the... Once Jesus came back after, when they claimed that, what, after crucifixion that he's God, what was the problem then? There was no problem. That's why people started worshiping him as God. But those who don't want to believe like you refuse to do so. The disciples okay. worshiped Jesus as God. The very okay. ones that Ron says were the victors. They're the ones who started worshiping him as God and claiming he is God in the flesh. And he proved it by his resurrection. Great. So can you show me where Mary was worshiping her son? Yes, Acts chapter 1. Oh, great. 12 to, oh, yeah, see? I'm you curious. think you're setting this up with your questions, but you're actually... I'm asking a question, brother, honestly. You <laughs> might, I, might, I might turn Christian, but you're you throwing me away, bro. Yeah, go to Acts chapter 1. Show them Acts chapter 1, verses yeah. 9 all the way to 14, where Mary <laughs> worships her son as the risen Lord, and she was no Muslim. Acts 1, 9 to 14. Mm -hmm. yeah. Keep asking and questions. I got I, I have one more question. Listen, bro, you never listen, Avery, man. Tell your man he 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 thrown me away. I haven't done he's one thing disrespectful to, to you not once. He's not not one. I have not said one thing disrespectful to, to you. Have I? No, Avery. You gotta, have, you gotta have some tough skin, man. Gotta but have Avery, have I have I disrespected him at all? Once? No, Even yes, once? He has, and he hasn't he yeah. hasn't disrespected you, man. He has. He he called me something. No, he no, he, he, he insulted me multiple times. Stay focused. Let's Can we focus. go to the verses, dude? Actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying, but stop. 
doesn't stop work. throwing shots at me, bro. Like I'm not a kid. We're you we're men talking. To be a victim when we ask you a question. I'm you not a listen, man. Listen, listen, bro. Listen, I came on here respectfully. I'm going to end respectfully. So if you don't want to talk to me, then talk to me. This course, okay, right, so bro. Let me go ahead and read the verses. I'm gonna read I'm the verses. Saying. I haven't said one thing disrespectful. Was crazy. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, let's yeah. read the verses then. I thought y'all was so Christian. Acts chapter ahead, bro. 1, you verses, almost 9, verses, like one. verses Go 9. Verses 9. What, Sam? Go ahead, brother. Acts You're one intimidated nine. by a slam, bro. Crazy. Oh, yeah, I'm scared. Oh, yeah, you can see we're destroying yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom. Go ahead, Avery, bro. I'm, I'm listening to you, bro. And when, and when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and the cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, the zealot, Judas, the son of James. And all uh, I'm sorry, all these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and his brothers. Now, those, Avery, before you, before you finish, I want them talking to you, Avery. So Jesus physically went to heaven and told them to wait, verse 8, mm -hmm. that he would send the Spirit upon them. So they're there praising and worshiping. And who's there praising and worshiping? Uh, well, I didn't know they're worshiping Jesus, though. That's what I was waiting for you to ask me. Here's how we're going to know. Now he's going to read 16 okay. to 26 to show you that they're worshiping Jesus. See, I knew you are going to ask okay. yeah, So no, great. guys, I want everyone Appreciate to notice. It. Hold on. I'm talking crowd. You notice... Every time I answer a question, he's already ready with a rebuttal, thinking that he's asking sincerely, and then he plays the victim. But go ahead, brother. Keep reading. Well, why can't I ask questions, bro? So the, go like, go we're ahead, talking. Read from, Relax, read from man. 15. Relax. Yeah, I'm relaxing, brother. So I'm, I'm calm, you see. 15 to 26. All right. In those days, so Mary's with all of them. All rise together. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of persons was in all about 120. And said, brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. Now this man acquired a field with, with the reward of his wickedness and falling headlong. He burst open in the middle of, and all his bowels gushed out. And he became, and it became known as the inhabitant to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that the field was called in their own language, Akeldama, that is the field of blood. For it is written in the Psalms, may his camp become desolate and let there be no one to dwell in it and let another take his office. So one of them, one of the men who have accompanied us during all this time, during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and, and uh, in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us, one of these men must become with us a witness to his resurrection. And they put forward two, Joseph and Bar, Bar Sabbath, who was also called Justice and, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, you, Lord, know the hearts of all. Show which one of these two. Wait, who did, they, who did they pray to, Avery, before we move on? The Lord, who is Jesus. And we know Jesus because it's verse 21. What did it say? Mm -hmm. I mean, these are really bad examples, you guys. Like, I, I, when, when, Lord, when, you're, when you're going through the Bible and it says, don't worship any Avery, God but me, there's only one God, that's a very next. one sentence. Like, if, if, if I'm a layman person, hear, hear me out, bro. No, Hear me no, out. but you, you who's the next? Of just oh, oh, you, you weren't, you weren't. I thought you were done. I apologize. Go ahead, bro. I thought you were done. Avery, brother, you know I love you. It's your channel, brother. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. If you're done, Sam. If, if you're done, you're done. All right. So. Yeah, yeah. No, he's done, man. You got so, yeah, I can't so. ask. Right. Bye, bye. You guys. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. 
You're a little yeah, racist. Yeah, lick, lick the black stone. <laughs> yeah. Like it's crazy, bro. <laughs> Avery, next dude, yeah. See, yeah, now, here, this is a message for all you fake Christians who think you're pious and spiritual in the comment section. You're more disgusting than the Muslims because you're so stupid and gullible that you don't see this guy is not asking sincerely. It's you clowns that claim to be Christian to make it harder for me. I expect them to play these games. Mm. Stop you Christians. You're a disgrace. Okay, go ahead, Ismailia. Good evening. Good evening. Here you are. Um, my question is regarding the incarnation. I can't hear you. My question is regarding the incarnation. Okay, the incarnation. Oh, okay, so, 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 if the Bible already tells the Jews that God is not a man, oh, that's so too easy. Why? Yeah. Huh? That's too so, easy. To the number is twenty-three nineteen. Too easy. Yeah. You're making it too so, easy. Can you make yeah. it a little harder? So, 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 why would God become a man and okay. expect the Jew to believe that Number one, he is the same God that told them he's not a man? Okay, can I answer you? Yeah. Okay, Do, have you read Numbers 23, 19, or you, you think you understand? Yeah. When was that, when was that revealed? Huh? Show Numbers 23, 19. Because I'm going to show uh, you, you don't read the Bible the way you read the Quran. you got to read it. Accurately. Numbers 23, 19. This is 1,500 years before Jesus is born, right? Yeah. So do you think that we believe that God was always a man? So at the time of Moses, God was a man? No. Okay. So can you show me where in Numbers 23, 19, it says God cannot become a man? There's a difference between saying God is not a man who will lie and then showing that God cannot become a man. Can you show me that in Numbers 23, 19? No, my question is my question is, is, is about the implication. You see, if you told the Jews already that God is not a man, yes, that he should lie or that he should waver. But why do you think the same God will become a man and yes. still expect the Jew he told he's not a man to because believe yeah, that same God man told him, of me? That same God told them in Isaiah 9 6, their God would be born as a child. Isaiah 9 6. See, if you listen, you have your answer. But I want to correct you that you misread the Bible. Let me answer you. Take it easy. The same God who said, if he brings up the Bible before the rapture, the same God who said in Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent, is the same God who then told him in Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born, a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, <clears throat> Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Brother, we can't see the Bible, brother. So I don't know if you have it on the screen or not. Oh, I don't I don't have it on the screen. I thought you was quoting from memory, man. Yeah, but it's okay. Oh, okay. So oh, okay. Um if if if, if, if yeah, yeah. did you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, Isaiah 9, the same God that you quoted partially, who's not always been a man, already announced to his people a child will be born who will be the mighty God, one of the names of God. Isaiah 9. Verse six and seven. So, what do you got to say to that? Okay, thank you. I understand Isaiah nine to be a prophecy given to King Ahaz that is supposed to take place during his no, that's time. Isaiah so, seven. So, You're first confused. of all, no, yeah, but it's same, yeah, it's that's same Isaiah person. Seven. Yeah, it's same person, oh, right? It's same person. Isaiah nine. Yeah, yeah, it's same person, right? The same person. No, it isn't. The same child. This, oh. So you mean Isaiah 7, okay, 14? Isaiah 7 is not, wait, is wait, about wait. Ahaz. So you're talking over me. So, 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 so you mean Isaiah 9 7? Isaiah not about Ahaz. Wait. So you okay. mean... Let me read it again. Ismail, don't talk over me. Ahaz in Isaiah 7 was the one sitting on the throne of David. Isaiah 9 is talking about someone else who will be born to sit on the throne of David. So it's not about Ahaz or to Ahaz. It's announcing to Israel, someone else will come to sit on David's throne, and he's the mighty God. Take it easy. I know your objections. Been there, done that. Now I'm going to show you Moses Maimonides, who is a rabbi who didn't like Islam or Christianity, who says Isaiah 9 is about the Messiah. Let me get you there. Oh, be patient. Can I get you clear? Because I understand, that, wait, I understand that the child that is promised to the woman in Isaiah seven fourteen. Here we go again. Is the same is the same chat in Isaiah nine six, right? No. Did you hear what I okay, said? Okay, thank you. 
Okay, okay, no. I, I, I get it. So, I get it. So, okay, that's fine. But my question is about... Wait, wait, um, Smelly, why would... the question. Let's stay in Isaiah yeah. 9. Okay, oh, okay, I... Isaiah 9 said... Wait, wait. Isaiah okay. 9 said that the child will be called... It, it said the child will be called this, this, and this. It doesn't say God will be born. He only said... When you call, when are, you call Allah... Al Rahman Rahim, it doesn't mean he's Al Rahman Rahim. Again, Jewish names often have name of God attached to them. So I don't see why. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let, let me hold on. So I don't see why this should be an exception. Secondly, no, 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 secondly, don't go to your second. Let me bury your first point to show you're a liar. Listen, show me any child who part of his name has. A string of names as his own proper name. Show me anyone that has here. Let's count. Wonderful. Counselor. Mighty. God. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. That a child or a king has six names as his name. Show it to me. Okay. So again. Show you it are, to me. One. Wait, Show wait, it. wait. You see, I allow you to finish. And this is a problem. You are not, let me learn at least. Okay, so again, you are missing the context of Isaiah 9 6 Give because me the thank me you. The so, so, so if you read Isaiah 9 6, you will know that the promise made to King Ahaz was that he was going to triumph over. Here, we're it again. A, wait, a, wait, 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 he was going he, to try. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on, Ismaila. Ismaila, hold on, hold on. What'd you say, Sam? Avery, let me talk to you, Avery, okay, because this guy. He's, he's too busy reciting the Quran in his ears. I want to respond. Okay, no, Avery, but, let, I'm but, not but, talking to you. Take it easy. Avery, which part of when I said in Isaiah 7, there it's talking about a child as a sign for Ahaz, which means it's not the same context as Isaiah 9, because in Isaiah 9, the child will sit on the throne of David, replacing Ahaz. So it's not a sign for Ahaz, because he's on the throne of David. But Isaiah 9 is about someone else who sit on the throne of David. I made that clear the first time. So which part wasn't clear that Isaiah 9 is not for Ahaz? Did you get that, Avery? Maybe you should have said it in Arabic. It probably would have been Okay, clear. but now let me ask you another question because this guy doesn't listen. See, they pretend they're listening and they think we don't know their objection. Second question for you, Avery. Can you show me, Avery, in the Old Testament where mm -hmm. a man, as part of his own name, has count and I'm, I just I'm going to give you the article because now I'm going to show Maimonides burying him and his religion because Maimonides says no this is about Messiah mm. here it is here's the article bring it up if you can okay yep. a man who has a name look at how many wonderful counselor mm. <clears throat> mighty God everlasting father prince of peace and I'll give you the Hebrew okay Pele Yoetz El Gibor Abiad <clears throat> Sar Shalom, all of that as his proper name. So when they see him, hey, Pele, Yoetz, El Gibor, Abiyad, Sar Shalom. Boy, that's a long name. See how stupid this argument is? These are not names. These are descriptions of the child. So can you show me, Avery, where another child or a king has a series of names, so many names, and this is a name? Given to him to signify the God he worships. So you say, hey, Pele, Yoetz, El Gibor, Abiyad, Sar Shalom. Get over here. Let's go to synagogue. If, if you are correct, can you show me where Jesus was called Every, mighty King. God? Can you show me where Maimonides? Show me can where you, Jesus was called mighty God. Show me. Show me where he was called mighty God. Maimonides saying that these are the names of Messiah so you can bury his religion. It's right sure. there. Yeah, right here. Maimonides, in the first Maimonides is a rabbi, <laughs> a medieval rabbi. Who was an anti Christian polemist who hated Christianity and hated Muhammad because he knew Muhammad is in hell? Mm -hmm. What does he say? These names are whose names? Read it for us. Yep. This whole paragraph? Yes, read it. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, Maimonides wrote <clears throat> Do these characteristics make him a Messiah? You, he, now, by the way, think? he's talking about some fake messianic pretender that showed up in Yemen. Some mm -hmm. guy came claiming to be Messiah. And he says, this guy that you think is the Messiah, he's a fake Messiah because we're going to know the Messiah by these names. Look what he's going to say. Yeah. You were beguiled by him because you have not considered the preeminence of the Messiah, the manner and place of his appearance and the marks whereby 
he is to be identified. The Messiah indeed ranks after Moses in eminence and distinction. And God has bestowed some gifts upon him, which he did not bestow upon Moses, as may be gathered from the verses. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins. Six appellations were divinely conferred upon him. Who? Upon the Messiah. So Maimonides is not a Christian, who is an anti-Christian rabbi, an anti-Muslim rabbi, he says six titles are given to the Messiah? Mm -hmm. What are they? Yep. Uh, 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 he quotes it. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government is upon his shoulder. And he is called Pele, Yoetz, El, Gibor, Abiyad, Shashalom. And another verse alluding to the Messiah is the following matter. You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Okay, now, Avery, before he comments, let's see if he's going to be honest and comment. Yep. You see that Maimonides says, Isaiah 9, 6, they're the names of the Messiah. These are his qualities. And he's also the son of God, Psalm 2, 7, and the spirit of God is on him. That's what Maimonides just said? That's what Maimonides just said. So wait, Maimonides, who's not a Christian, said Isaiah 9, these are the qualities of Messiah. Mm. And that Psalm 2, 7 is about Messiah being the son of God. And Isaiah 11 is about the Messiah having the spirit of God on him. So God's spirit is on Messiah. Messiah is God's son and Messiah is called mighty God. That's what Maimonides said. That's what Maimonides said. And he's not a Christian? Not a Christian. And I'll finish it for my pagan friend and then maybe you can respond honestly this time. Finish it and then let him respond. All right. All these statements demonstrate the preeminence of the Messiah. Moses Maimonides, Epistle to Yemen. Uh, so just quote this. Do you want me to keep reading this? No, you can have your friend honestly answer the fact that Maimonides said he doesn't always talk about that. Maimonides admitted Isaiah 9, these are the names of Messiah telling us about his character, not about the God that sent him. And yeah. one of those is that he's the mighty God. That means the mighty, the mighty God is born as a child, the Messiah. And have him answer who the Messiah is according to him. Let him answer. You can do it because I gave him the evidence. Okay. So you yourself, you said Maimonides attested that these are titles. So titles don't necessarily state your essence, right? But... Can you show me where Jesus yes, was called El Gibor? Wait, wait, wait. Is this, yes, this, this is the problem. I allow you to finish. Let me no. finish. I allow you to finish. Let me correct the why, first lie so you can why get your unfairness. <laughs> is so, Messiah you, Prince of Peace? Yes or no? Can you show me where Jesus was called is El Gibor Messiah in the New Testament? Peace, yes or no? Show me where Jesus was called is Almighty. Is Messiah Prince of Peace? Yes or no? Of course he was. Say it uh -huh. again. Wait, wait. Of course, you also. How does that mean that is essence? Wow. You just no. married yourself. Wow. Yes. No. Yes. Can Show I me tell where you he was why? called El Gibor. Show me okay. where he was called El Gibor. Let me tell you why if you stop reciting Quran for me. Let me tell you why. Wow. You just said titles are not descriptions or qualities. But you just admit that one of the titles, Prince of Peace, is telling us about the quality of Messiah, that he's the ruler of peace. That means you just buried yourself. If Prince of Peace means he's actually the Prince of Peace, you just admit that means he's actually the mighty God. Thank you. Now, according to you, who's the Messiah? According to you, who's the Messiah? Hello? Yeah, according you to me? you, who's the Messiah? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, according to you, who's the Messiah? The Messiah is not God. The, the Messiah is according Jesus. According so... to you, who's the Messiah? It's Jesus, of course. So how does that wait, mean wait, God? Wait, slowly. <laughs> wait, slowly. So... Again, wait, wait. You, no. you are yet to show me where he was called El Gibor. Take it easy. Show me where he was called El Gibor, please. That Jesus is show El Gibor. Me. Yeah, that's what he thought. All right, thank you. Thank you, man. Sorry, brother. I know I'm not patient like you, but you see why, right? Well, he was more patient than I was on this one. Yeah, yeah. All right, you got it. Anyway, so you guys see it. Now, you, and I'm, this is a message. Now, I don't want to be this. This is my brother's channel, and I pray God bless him and he explodes. Puts me to shame. 
But brethren, do not tell me how to deal with Muslims. You, what we call armchair quarterbacks, who are sitting behind like little sissies thinking you're holier. Quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah, that's what they are. Because these cowards, they'll bark thinking they can do a better job. You don't know the Muslims. You don't. You don't know the fakes. And this is why you're going to get yourselves killed because you're gullible. Nobody's being sincere as he beheads you. Wake up. Stop being effeminate sissies. We're men, lions, see through the facade. They're not asking sincerely. Stop telling me what to do. I have no respect for you guys because you make it harder for me as a Christian when I have to then rebuke you guys, you fake. But anyway, brother, hope you're enjoying us. Let's go. I'm you all right? One more? You're you tired of me. <laughs> of course not. All right. So we got quite a few people here. So guys, for the Muslims that... Because I'm assuming all of you guys are Muslims because it does say Muslim only. So um, so all of you guys that are sitting here, uh, Rashid Amin, uh, Adam, uh, Bilal Ahmed, uh, Halal Goku. <laughs> nice name. Oh, uh, Halal Goku is making fun of me, Halal Hogan. So they're going to start manifesting. Be careful. Mm. Now, by the uh, way, just give me you, time. All of you want to go? Just curious. I, I'm, I'm chilling, man. Like, this was a free day. I wasn't, I wasn't, you got 3,000 today, brother. 3,000. Yeah, you yeah, blowing up. You putting me to shame. I can't even get six hundred. What is it about you, man? You better look at me. That's no. That's just no. You be getting like a thousand, eight hundred, a thousand. Man, stop it. But um, yeah, all glory to God, man. So guys who are in the guest section, I pray you prosper, brother. It's all about Jesus, not about ego. May you prosper yeah. and shine for the glory of Christ, and may I walk worthy of the Lord. So go ahead, brother. Bring them on. Yeah, thank you. you. And everybody, make sure that you guys hit the like button. Don't forget to do that. That's really important. That this Let the stream blow up and get out there. Hit the like button so that we can see and you show how the Christians answer these type of objections, man. It's really easy. Uh, for the guests who are in here, uh, I need this one rule. I need you guys to show your camera, show your face uh, so that I can see you and see that you're not a troll. All right. At, all right. Throw, throw the peace sign up, Adam. Throw the peace sign up. All right. Are you a Christian thumbs up or thumbs down? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> All right. All right. Let me see. Uh, Bilal Ahmed, I can't see your face, bro. All right. Throw a thumbs up for me, Bilal. Okay. You're a real person. All right. I already know you're a real person. So the people who did not show their camera, I'm going to go ahead and remove you. I'm going to go ahead and remove you. Uh, nobody with weird names is going to come up and be weird. Martin, are you a, a Christian or a Muslim? Put a thumbs up if you're a Christian. Thumbs down if you're a all right, so no Christians, man. It's, it literally says Muslims only. Now, look at that stupid comment from Travis. He gets a lot of people because he's respectful. Gee, and I'm here, and we got over 3,000. So, Travis, how stupid do you feel? Come on, let me Crazy. know. Crazy. I'm feeling Crazy. stupid for you, Travis. See what happens when you bark and you think you're holy? You dumb little monkey. No disrespect to monkeys. But anyway, brother, anyone else? Yeah, I'm, I'm bringing the next one. See how stupid Travis sounds? What's up, Bilal Ahmed? How are you, man? You got two names, Bilal. And you have Ahmed. Two names. Yeah. Hey, Adam, talk to me in the chat real quick. Let me tell me where, where you stand, Adam. Go ahead, Bilal. Go ahead, buddy. Okay. Uh, I have a question okay. regarding Bible. Okay, be, be, Bilal, uh, before, before you go on, will you be respectful enough at least to answer and engage and not ignore? Yes, I will be respectful. Okay, okay go ahead. Then. then we can have a serious conversation, not games. Go ahead. Okay, so... My question is regarding science and uh, Bible. Oh, no, not science. No way. Go ahead. Yeah. So in Genesis chapter 1, uh, verse no, number 1. The sunlight. <gasps> yeah. Uh, yeah. You, no way. That okay. one. I never heard that one before. I mean, there are a couple uh, verses. They even when uh, Moses talks about which animals are clean to eat and which are unclean to eat, you know. Animals what? No, when Moses talks about which animal is clean and which animal is unclean yeah, to consume. 11, I'm sorry, yes. In, yes, Leviticus 11, Deuteronomy 14. So what's which question you want me to answer? Because you... No, 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 I'm asking generally in science. Yes. 
uh, I I know you know what I'm about to ask. In Genesis chapter number one, yeah. verse number one. Yeah. Uh, it talks talks yeah. about the earth being formed in this uh, dark void. Yes. In Genesis chapter number one, verse number fourteen. Then the sun, huh? Yeah, and then the sun forms. Okay. Can I ask in you the, a question? Yes. Yes. Is Allah Allah Almighty to you? Uh, yes. So let me just ask a question. I want to see how serious you are. So you're saying, how can you have, are you talking about vegetation before the sun? Is that what you're asking me? No, no I'm asking, What's the how question? did the sun come before the earth? The sun came before the earth? I mean, sorry. Or after the earth? The earth came before the sun. Sorry, I got okay, confused. So Okay, so let me ask you a question. Let's say that's what the Bible, according to you. So you're saying God cannot sustain the earth. He needs the sun to help him? No, I would agree that God is, you know, he's yeah, almighty. He can easily do that. But, but yeah. according to modern saints, we know that's, no, that's, that's not how that's actually... scientific theories. That's not a fact. No, no this is an established fact, though. No, this it isn't. Is established. No, it isn't. So now re respond to me because I'm going to now turn the argument against the Quran because you're going with theories, right? Okay, now I'm going to oh, yeah. remember, we're going to be honest. No, it's a yeah, theory, yeah. it's not a fact. But let's go with it. Are you telling uh, me that God Almighty could not preserve the earth without the sun first, so he needed help from the sun? Or do you agree that God could sustain the earth even before the sun was created? Yes or no? Yes, uh, absolutely. He can sustain the earth before the sun. Okay, so that's your answer, number one. You can go with yeah. my scientific theories all you want, but now I'm going to use scientific theories. You said it's a fact. So you said it's a fact. I want everyone to hear you. You said it's a fact. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did. Okay, but then you just destroyed the Quran because the Quran says that the earth was created before the sun and the moon. Uh, no, yeah. I don't think oh, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Chapter 2, verse 29. We're going to have fun with you. Guys, you heard it, right? Wait, wait. You heard it, right? He said... How can the earth be there before the sun? He just destroyed the Quran. You see the dishonest arguments that Zechariah. Uh, let me just check up. Uh, what do you say? What is the reference? I'm you just hold on. Let me make my point. Yeah, okay, okay. You said to everyone, these are facts, not theories. Now I'm going to go by yeah, your the... what happens when you follow Zechariah. I'm not going to show you according to your Quran and your hadith, but I'm going to stick with the Quran. Your earth was created before there was a heaven. So where did the earth exist before the heaven? Let's prove it. Open up the Quran for him. Yeah, okay. Rest, rest once again. Okay. He's going to open it up. He's going to open it up. I'm waiting. I don't know. Are you on the phone, dude? You're killing me, uh, Avery. I'm Check. making sure I'm making sure the trolls are not here. Man. Sorry, man. Ignore them for now because he's going to show them. Guys, let me repeat what he said. I want everyone to hear this. Yeah. He said, it is a fact of science, not a theory. The sun was there before the earth, so the Bible's wrong. Okay. He said it's a fact. Now he has to destroy the Quran. Because yep. the Quran says the earth was there before the heavens, before there was sun and moon. Read yeah. chapter 2, verse 29 for me. Chapter 2? He'll read it for you, my friend. He'll read it for you. Yeah, okay. I got okay. you. I got you. 2, All right. Okay, it says, it is, uh, he it is who created for you all that is on earth. Then he rolls over then towards. Thumma. Hold on. Yep. Then Thumma, he rose and did what? Rose oh. over towards the heaven and made them seven heavens. And he is all knower of everything. Now, before I go to the other verses, can you quote to me one scientist who says, Allah made the earth and then turned and made the heaven into seven heavens? The heavens came later. Um, there are many scientists who who don't believe in the supernatural. No, no. Give me one that says the earth was created before the heavens and the galaxies. Uh, okay, uh, let me elaborate. First, uh, I don't think unless he's a Muslim scientist, like for example, there's a Muslim scientist, obviously he'll believe in the metaphysical heavens. But if it's just an, any other scientist like Albert Einstein, Okay, let's, go with the universe. let's play your game. One of the seven heavens is the universe. Can you show me any scientist that says the earth was created before the universe? Because of the seven heavens, your Quran says one of them is the universe. I'm going to show it to you. Can you show it to me? <laughs> yeah, I, I I do know that. I do agree with you that the, so, one of the heavens. Can you show me a scientist no. that says that? 
I mean, I, I need to Google any Muslim scientist. Oh, Sheikh Google. Okay, okay. Now, let me show you that in chapter 41, verses 9 to 12, the earth was there when there was no universe. The universe was smoke. So according to you, you just destroyed the Quran. So why are you a Muslim? Chapter 41, let him read it for you, verses 9 to 12. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, wait. Well, let me read it for you. Hold on. And I'm going to show you the Arabic. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 it's fine. You're you can Sunni, right? What, what do you say? Are you Sunni or Shi? No, I just follow the Quran. I don't no, come particularly on, follow. You either follow Quran and Sunnah or you're Shia. Don't so you No, I follow the Quran and Sunnah. Okay, so you're Sunni. Because now I'm gonna bring you Bukhari and Muslim. Oh my goodness, you're in trouble. But anyway, 41 verses 9 to 12. All right. Say, do you verily disbelieve in him who created the earth in two days? And you set up rivals with him? That is the Lord of the Alameen, mankind, the worlds. He placed therein firm mountains above it, and he blessed it and measured therein its sustenance in four days. Uh, yep, for all those who ask. Okay. Wait, why is this giving this? Then, thumma, pay attention if you're honest. I like you, you're respectful, but you answer. Now yeah. look, it says... Then, no, you all should respect Thumma, notice, he created the earth two days. It's nourishment mountains in four days. Then Thumma, what did he do? Read it for us. Then he rose over toward the heaven when it was smoke. Pause right there. Show me one scientist that says that when the earth was created and it's nourishment mountains, the heaven was smoke. It wasn't formed already. Uh, I would say Maurice Bukel. No, Maurice Bukel twisted the word Thumma and the response is in William Campbell. And Maurice Bukel... Uh, in his book, he, uh, yes, he uh, Maurice interpreted Bukele the word... Uh, in science, already destroyed by the Quran and the Bible, Light of History and Science by William Campbell. Sorry, I, I didn't hear what you... Uh, Maurice Bukel is not an astrophysicist. Show me a scientist, give me his name, where does he teach, that says that the earth was already formed and its nourishment when the heaven was still a smoke. No, I'm, no, no. Uh, actually the smoke part which you're referring to is actually scientific. It refers no, to, uh, you know, before the Big Bang. You're not but, listening. Uh, there is no, no Big no, Bang. I did. Can I repeat? There is no Big Bang yeah, 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 you can. when the heaven is smoke and the earth already exists. The earth is in the heaven. It's not separate from the heaven. You didn't read the verse. It says he created the earth and its nourishments. Then he turned to the heaven when it was smoke. There is no earth when the heaven is smoke. So wait, wait, Can you go to the earlier verse which you referred? Yeah, read it again. Uh, where you said that. He's going to read it to you. Nine to, he's going to read 9 to 12. You're going to read it. Pay attention now. Don't be Sheikh. Yeah, yeah. What is good? No, 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 I'm not checking. You're a good man. I like you. You're a good man. All right, so it says, do you verily believe in him who created the earth in two days? All right, so let's get down to the 10th verse. I mean, uh, yeah, the 10th verse. Created the earth in two days. He placed therein firm mountains from above it, and he blessed it and measured therein its sustenance in four days. Okay, for all those who ask. Then... He rose, rose over towards the heaven when it was just smoke. Keep reading all the way so you can see what happened when the heaven was smoke. Go ahead. And said to it and to the earth, come, both of you willingly or unwillingly. They both said, we come willingly. Now, but, but pay attention. Let's see if you're listening, Bilal Ahmed. Notice the heaven was smoke and the earth was there. And he's speaking to both of them. Hey, earth. Yeah. Heaven, come together. So the earth is there when the heaven is gaseous. Now, now read all the way to 12, because I have a question for you. Keep reading. All right. <clears throat> the phone, dude. Then he completed and finished from their creation seven heavens in two days. And he made each, he made in each heaven its affair. And we adorned the nearest heaven with lamps. Okay, did you catch it? So you don't run from this. The nearest yeah, yeah, yeah. heaven, 
That's the sun, moon, and stars. So now let me repeat what the Quran said so you can answer the question honestly. Okay. You just read that the earth was already formed and the mountain nourishment formed when the heaven was smoke. And then Allah looked at the smoke and earth, said, come together, which means the earth is already there. Then he took the smoke, made it seven heavens, and then he placed in the lowest one the lamps, meaning the stars. Now I want you to quote any scientist today that says, the earth was already existing when the universe was smoke, because if so, where was the earth existing? It's in the universe, not outside of it. I mean, uh, any scientist, and I think you would agree with me, uh, any scientist can't prove or disprove uh, the beginning of the oh, universe. Oh, hold on, oh, wait, you just hit me hard. <laughs> Say it again, one more time. No, because uh, no scientist can actually prove or disprove the Say, beginning of the universe. Again? Say it again. <laughs> uh, no scientist can prove or disprove the beginning of the universe. <laughs> but earlier with the Bible, this is fact of science. The sun come later. But now with the Quran, no scientist. No. Okay. What's your next question? No, no, no. Uh, what's your next question? Okay. Uh, we'll get on science. Yeah, I, I'll just say. Get, it, get something on theology. Because science, forget. The Quran has so many scientific mistakes. It's a joke. Let's go to something else. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, 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 can I elaborate on that? Just uh, Can I just say one point and then move on to science? my next? Go ahead. Go ahead. You want to stay on science? Go ahead. I mean, if you're okay with it, if you want, I'll just uh, move on to the next question. Because I, I don't want to elaborate one point. Friend, you can't elaborate on these passages, Quran, because I have Muhammad's interpretation. And Muhammad taught the earth was there before the heaven. I have it. I have the quotes yeah. from Muhammad. But what you're doing... Yeah, you but isn't it a uh, metaphor? What? Isn't it metaphysical, the heavens? So no scientist can no, prove or disprove here. it since no. it's metaphysical. No, you didn't hear the last part. It says, and we deck the lowest heaven with lamps. That's talking about the stars that give light. That's not metaphysical. That's the universe. Did you not yeah. read it in 12? Okay. No, so no, no. I'm, no, I'm completely, you know, I'm completely fine with that verse. I don't know what what's do you mean you're unscientific. You can't be fine because no scientist says the earth was already formed when there was no universe because it says when the earth was formed, the heaven was smoke, and then he made it seven heavens, and the lowest one is the universe. So where was Wait, the earth? Is it established that the earth was there before the universe was created? Established what again? Is it established by science? That That's what you by said. Yes, your big no, no, bang theory. You told me Big no. Bang. And the Big Bang says, when it banged, the universe expanded, then the earth formed in the earth, in the universe. Yes, according to your theory. That's the one you're using against the Bible. No, no, no. Uh, respectfully, What's what I asked was... Good. Yeah, what I science, asked was... You're going to destroy your religion, dude. Go to another question. Do you have anything about Trinity? Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so another problem I have with the Bible is uh, the numerical contradictions. Oh, are you sure? But buddy, can I ask you something? Do you believe Muhammad? Yeah. Do you believe Muhammad? Yeah, I do. Do you believe what Muhammad said about the Bible? Uh, I don't know if he specified. No, no. Do you believe, if you believe Muhammad, you believe what he says about the Bible, right? Yeah, but he mentioned the original teachings, not no, no, the no, no. present Take Bible. Take care easy. No, he didn't. Because Muhammad said Jesus confirmed the Torah between his hands. And Muhammad confirmed the Torah between his hands. But you're just telling me yeah, that. Yeah, original teachings. What? The original te te no, teachings of the Torah that Muhammad had, and I'm going to prove it to you. We're going to go to Sunan Abu Dawood. You have the hadith. So I want you to keep destroying religion because when you attack the Torah, you're attacking Muhammad. It's okay. I don't believe. No, Muhammad. I don't. Uh, I don't mean to attack. I'm just asking Unless some questions. Mean it a lot. Because in Sunan Abu Dawood, number forty-four, thirty-four, Hassan, good. Uh, okay. It's going to be difficult for me to check it up. Can you? He's going to bring it to you, but I'm giving yeah, you the. Okay. Okay. Okay, in Sunan Abu Dawud 4434, Hassan, good. It says, Muhammad told them, bring me the Torah, their copy, their copy at his time. He put it on the cushion. He says, yeah. I believe in you and the one who sent you. He didn't say you've been changed, corrupted. But that Torah, according to you, has numerical mistakes. So why did Muhammad believe in it? The present uh, Bible is what, uh, what I'm talking about. The Torah at that time. Can I, can I, 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 kiss, if, you? By... Can I kiss you? Because the present Torah 
is a translation of these copies of the Torah that have been there for centuries. And the Torah they had is what I have today. Uh, He'll read it uh, for me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I know, uh, I believe this hadith. No, I didn't, that's not what I'm telling you. The only Torah the Jews had at the time Muhammad is what I have today because the English translations are based on these copies of the Bible that were written before, during, and after Muhammad, and it's the same. It's not a different Torah that does not exist in history. That would uh, that would indicate that the Torah a thousand four hundred years ago was uncorrupted, and then after That's what your prophet um, said right here. Yeah, yeah, thousand four hundred years ago it was uh, intact. No, then... no, he's talking about the Torah in his hand right here in front of you. Read it. He's uh, right for the, the copy in his hand. Bring the Torah. It was then brought, he then withdrew the cushion from beneath him and placed the Torah on it and said, I believe in these and in him who revealed thee. Did I ask you a question? Yeah, this is correct. Uh, I don't disagree with this. 1400 years ago? Yeah, 1400 years ago it was intact. And then after no, Muhammad... the Torah uh, in his hand, you're not listening. Stuck for Allah, get stuck for Allah. He's taking the copy they had and he took it. He says, I believe in you. This is your prophet. So yeah. what copy no, did he I have? I don't disagree with you. This guy doesn't get it. Do you understand? No, I do. I do. Okay. So what Torah did they have? Uh, they had the Torah just 1,400 years ago. So they had a copy of it, right? Because the original wasn't there, right? Yeah, yeah. They, they had a copy. Ah. Okay. So what was that copy? Because we have manuscripts of the Old Testament before Muhammad, during Muhammad, after Muhammad, like the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yeah, yeah. What was it? No, what, what do you ask? Since you admit they had the copy at the time Muhammad of the original Torah, a copy of it there at time Muhammad, then you're admitting yeah. that the copies that we have are accurate copies of the original Torah. So what was that Torah? What did it look like based on the copies we have? Uh, I would say it, it, would, it would look like the original teaching of Moses because Muhammad confirmed it at his time. Teaching of who? Say it again. Uh, Moses. Okay, I'm going to challenge you. Show me one verse in the Quran that it says, in the Quran, that it says the Torah was given to Moses. Oh, wait, I think I got mistaken. The Torah, according to Muhammad and his companions, is the word used for the scriptures of the two people of the book. He used it for all their books, not just the books of Moses. Here, let me show it to you because, again, unlike you, we've done the research here. So hopefully, you look sincere. I hope you see the truth and stop using these arguments. Here, let me show it to you. One second. I'm going to get it for you because it's in my article. One second. Just give me a chance, man. Don't rush me. Don't rush me. I made that mistake before. Well, let me get your and open up for you and you'll see it. So if the Bible you're saying has all these errors and yet your prophet confirmed the Bible, you just prove your prophet doesn't know what he's talking about. So then stop being a Muslim. Become Bart Ehrman. Here, I'm going to show you. Here, open up in the private chat, brother. Here it is. Right there. Tell her. I'll give you 10 million bucks. You show me where it says in the Quran, the Torah is given to Moses. You don't know your own religion, Talha. But, right, no, 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 sorry. I, I got Talha. mistaken. I... Bilal, I'm talking to Talha. He's coming in the private chat. Okay, oh, okay, okay. Okay, now right here. The Salaf, meaning the companions of Muhammad and their followers and their followers after him. Rob Christian, how you doing, brother? A lion for Christ. Lord bless you, my brother. Prosper you and expand your ministry and preserve us all. We love Rob Christian. He's a warrior. But anyway, he's now going to read to you in my article. If he scrolls down, he's going to show you. See, Ibn Kathir on 7 157. Look what he's going to say. Ibn Kathir. Hey, bro, I love you, man. I hope you're not on that phone, bro. You're killing me. There, go read it for me. Tell your lady you're going to marry her eventually. Take it easy, man. Focus. It's right. crazy that I'm literally on point and he's just complaining. That's crazy. Right? Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, now. <laughs> Ibn Jarir recorded uh, Al Mutanna said, <laughs> Yeah, Al Atta bin Yasser. Yeah, forget the name, just get you. see. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, tell me about the description of Allah's messenger in the Torah. He said, Yes, by Allah, he is described in the Torah as he is described in the Quran. Uh, verily, 
we have sent you as a witness. You can skip to the bold part so you can see. Now notice, pay attention. This is what the Salaf, the Salaf are the first three generations of Muslims, Muhammad's companions, their followers. Look what they use the word Torah for. Look at here. It was common in the speech of our Salaf that they described the books of the people of the two scriptures as the Torah, as some hadiths concur. Did you catch it? The word Torah means all their books, not just the revelation given to Musa. Mm. You okay. got it? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. I got it. So I'm asking you, that Old Testament that Muhammad had, a copy, do you know what it looks like? No, I don't. We have manuscripts before Muhammad, during Muhammad, after Muhammad, of the Old Testament, like the Dead Sea Scrolls, and it's what I read today. Today, it's the same. We translate from these manuscripts. So if you're telling me that's full of contradictions, so are you saying Muhammad made a mistake because he confirmed that Old Testament that you say is full of errors? So you know more, more than Muhammad? No. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is the present Torah, is, you know, it's incorrect. The Torah, which was at the time, before the time of Muhammad and at the time of Muhammad was correct. Okay, my friend, let me repeat it again. The present Old Testament I'm reading is a translation of the yeah, copy you, that Muhammad no, no, that he believed in. Muhammad looked at a copy of the Torah. He said, I believe in you. We know what that copy looked like because we have copies of the Old Testament before, during, after Muhammad. They're the same. So it's my Torah today. So okay. are you saying Muhammad was wrong? For com confirming, for confirming the Old Testament that I read, which is a translation of what he had, because you're saying it's full of errors, so you know more than Muhammad. No, no, no I don't. Okay, can no, you stop no. using these arguments and stop attacking the Old Testament? Because Muhammad said, "No, the Old Testament is true; it's God's word." Stop attacking it. But are you going to be honest with me? And if yeah, I yeah, I'll be honest. Okay, no, I was I honest with you the whole time. Okay, let me give you now. Can I give you numerical mistakes in your Quran? So you reject your Quran? Uh, no, I don't. Can I give you? If I show you now, you have numerical yeah. contradictions in the Quran. Wait, uh, can I ask the original question I had, which was the numerical question in your Bible? Go ahead, say it. This will be the last, this, yeah. the, this last, last thing, and we've got to go to the next guest. Yeah, yeah okay, okay. So, Second Kings chapter number 8, verse number 26. Yeah. Uh, it mentions Isaiah's yeah. age. And then... In Second yes, Chronicles, chap yeah, and did Muhammad have Second Kings and Second Chronicles when they gave him the copy of the Torah? Uh, yeah, it, it, you it, said it, again? it had yeah. a different form of it. Okay, because prove of present, by... prove it because the copies we have <laughs> are the same copies that Muhammad read, which you just attacked against. So you're saying Muhammad is a liar? Uh, no, I'm, I'm not attacking. I'm just asking you. No, uh, well, I'm answering you because transcriptional errors, when copyists make mistakes in the manuscripts, that doesn't mean the fault is from God because no copyist copies perfectly. That's why your Quran manuscripts, you have thousands of errors because of copying. But put that aside. What I'm trying to get you to tell me, did Muhammad yeah. not know about these numerical differences in those copies? If he didn't, then he's not a prophet. If he did, then he's not a prophet because he confirmed these copies as God's word. Either way, he's okay. not a prophet if you're right. Okay, I'll, I'll explain it in one sentence or two. Please. Uh, I'll try my best. I like three. Okay. Yeah, so the 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 manuscripts, which was at the time of Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, and before the time of peace be upon him, those manuscripts were correct. Afterwards, uh, people wrote, you know, and changed Afterwards? the Bible. Afterwards? Afterwards, okay. Yeah, we had the Dead Sea Scrolls before Muhammad, and it was no before Muhammad. I, uh, it was correct because okay. he confirmed the Dead it, right? Sea Scrolls. That's what I'm telling you. And guess what? The Dead Sea Scrolls before Muhammad. You said it's correct. It's identical to what I read today. It's the same. The Dead Sea Scrolls found in 1947. Books Wait, of the uh, isn't it just a page? What the Dead Sea Scrolls is just uh, a page or two. But it tells you that what they're reading is what we have today. Yes, it's fragmentary, but you have a complete copy of Isaiah. That means it's the same Old Testament throughout the centuries. Oh, so uh, okay. Uh, wait, right uh, no, I have a doubt uh, in the Dead Sea Scrolls part. What do you mean? Have a doubt? Uh, Dead Jesus confirmed the Old Testament of his time. Chapter 3, verse 50 of your Quran. Chapter 5. <clears throat> 
if you read chapter 5, verse 46 of the Quran, and 61, 6 says, Jesus, chapter 3, verse 48, chapter 3, verse 50, chapter 5, verse 46, and chapter 61, 6 says, confirming the Torah between his hands, and the only Old Testament he had is what we have today, because the Dead Sea Scrolls tells us these are the books that Jesus had. So again, no. if they are full of mistakes, then that means Allah deceived Jesus and Muhammad to confirm these books. So Allah deceived them? <laughs> Let me just ask okay, a doubt. And then... Numerical problems of the Quran, because I want you to stop being a Muslim according to your criteria. You ready or no? Uh, I'll just ask one doubt about the Dead Sea Scrolls and then you can ask the question. Well, it's I just, just the Dead Sea Scrolls, buddy. We have, no, okay. it's... Let's go with Isaiah. We have a complete copy of Isaiah. In the Dead Sea Scrolls intact, it's identical to what we have today. Are you going to accept Isaiah? But isn't it just uh, Isaiah which is intact, the other... The... Okay. <sighs> ya Allah. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> the Dead Sea Scrolls is only comprised okay, of again. two to three pages. Okay. Now, can you give me a complete copy of the Quran from the time of Muhammad? Uh, no, we have carbon dated manuscripts no, from I different parts of the world. It's collected copy of the Quran, complete, not fragments of the Quran from the time yeah, Muhammad. We have, um, okay, uh, I'll, I'll just answer in 30 seconds. We have different parts of the Quran, okay. different, for example, New University of Birmingham, where yeah, they, yeah. That, they have a carbon dated. Do you have a complete copy, yes or no? Uh, if I say yes or no, then it wouldn't, like, I have to elaborate, right? I can't just answer in yes or no. Friend, do you have a complete copy of the Quran that's not fragmented? Okay. Yes. That doesn't yes. have contradictions with the other manuscripts that's under 14 surahs? Yes, yes. Give it to me, name uh, it. it. Uh, well, there are different parts. I can't sit and name every single one, but. Okay, buddy. Now uh, let's go. These to the, fragments make up. Open up chapter 2, verse 29 for him, because I'm going to show him the mistakes of the Quran, the numbers of the Quran, so he's not going to bury the Quran. There is none. And even the uh, copies that exist, Topaki, uh, Tokapi, Tashkent, they are variants with each other. They're not identical. So don't play that game with me. But now I want you to condemn Islam because it has numerical mistakes. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Go to, forget 229. Go to chapter 7, verse 54 for my friend. So why, guys, I guys, they my face all the time. 754. Come on, Sam. Come on. <laughs> No, I'm going to hurt You're myself. Gonna You're killing me. All right. Okay. All right. 754. How many days did it take Allah to create heavens and earth? Let's see the numerical problems. Allah, who created the heavens and the earth in six days. Then he rose over the throne. Okay. So how many days? Six. You sure it's six? Six. Okay. You sure, right? I want to make sure my friend hears it. You heard it, right? Chachi, six long periods. Yeah. The translation is In your not... Mirage. Okay, six long periods. Because I'm going to show you it's eight long periods. Okay, go to 11 verse 7. 11 verse 7. In your Mirage. But that's okay. Yeah, you let Bukhay deceive you. Hmm. All right. And it is he who created the heavens and the earth in six days. How many and days? In six. Okay. Or periods. Let's go to my friend. Wait, wait. I have, can you go back to the verse before you should... For Allah, get stuck for Allah. Go back to 754. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's the same verse in 754 and this one. It says in six days, heavens and earth and everything between them in six days. Or six periods. Let's go with periods. You like periods. Muhammad like periods too. Good. Read it from 754. You got it? Is it there? Uh, yeah, I read, I read it. I read it already. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Indeed, indeed, your Lord is Allah who created the heavens and the earth in six days. Then he rose over the throne in a matter that suit. Yeah, then he rose over the throne. Do you need to repeat it again? It's the same thing, 11 yeah. verse 7, six days. You got it so far? Okay, okay, okay. If we got it, right? Okay, chapter 50, verse 38. What does it say? 50, 38. All right, 5038. Yeah. All right. Sarkoff. Yes, read for me. All right, let's see here what we've got. As long as it will load. Come on, man. Okay. So let's get this going. All right. Here it 
this. And indeed, we created the heavens and the earth and all between them in six days and nothing of fatigue touched us. All between heaven and earth six days. You got it, right? I don't need to give you another verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. No, you don't need to laugh. Let's see if you got it. Guys, you already got it. Six days, heaven, earth, everything in between them. Okay, now 41 verses 9 to 12. Let's do math. Let's do Allah's math. Okay, you ready? 41 verses 9 to 12. Now, I know you can count, right? You can count, correct? Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, let's see. Now, let's see. I'm uh, Open it up. I'm going to read it for him slowly. Okay. This is 41 verse 9 to 12. Guys, remember six days. Now, let's do math. Say, do you very disbelieve in him who created the earth in two days? Now, Avery, make sure you hold me accountable. Two days? Yeah, yeah. Set up rivals Pardon. and worship with him. That is the Lord. Rabbul Alameen. Okay, two days. So he created the earth in two days. Okay, now let's go. First time. He placed therein the mountains from above it. And he blessed it and measured their its sustenance in four days. Okay, now, Avery, I'm not that smart. So mm -hmm. if he created the earth in two days, mm -hmm. and then he measured it out and created sustenance, its mountains, in four days. So two plus four is what, my friend? That's six. But uh, my, my other six. friend, my other friend. Two plus four is what? Mm. My friend, Ahmed. Two, oh, he left, huh? He took off. He left? Yeah, because you're too Can you tell your fiance you'll talk to her later, bro? Killing me, bro. I don't know. You're looking at the phone. You're looking down at something. Where'd he, where'd he go, man? Left because he saw where we're going with this. Oh, that's tough. Now, you want me to finish it for the rest of you? Okay, finish it for the rest of you. Yeah, go ahead. I'll he placed there. therein firm mountains from above it and he blessed it and measured therein its sustenance in four days. So, two plus four is what? That's six. Okay, now let's go to the other verses. Okay, mm -hmm. now 11 and 12. So verse 12, then he, then he completed and finished. Oh, 11, start 11 and 12. We're going to start. You were, you were at 10. We got to go to 11. I'm going to read it. Okay, so 2 plus 4 is 6. Then verse 11. Then he rose over towards the heaven when it was smoke and said to it and to the earth, come both of you willingly or unwilling. Okay. They both said we come willing. Then what does 12 say? Then he completed and fashioned from their creation seven heavens in two days oh, wait two plus four plus two two days to create the earth four days to create its nourishment mountains and then two days to make this the smoke into seven heavens two yep. plus four plus two that's eight yep but in the other passage says six yep but now here it says the earth and its nourishments were created in four days then he fashioned the heaven and made the heavens, seven heavens, from its smoke state, right? Mm -hmm. So now in this sequence, what came first? The earth, nourishment, and mountains, right? Before the heaven, when it was smoke, was made into seven heavens, right? Okay, now go to 79, 27, 33. Hey, bro, can you ship me your phone, bro? I need your phone. Damn, bro. This is crazy. Damn, you're cooking, man. I'm managing the stream while you cook. How you how you looking at something? The screen's in front of you, but you're looking down. Yeah, I got my phone, man. I gotta manage everything. Love you, bro. All right, man. But I'm saying, bro, let me know when you wrap up because you want to get married, and you better invite me to that wedding. All right, now, guys, you f followed the order. Created the earth in two days. Created the earth's nourishment mountains in four days. Then the heaven was smoke, and the earth was there. And he told heaven and smoke, uh, heaven and earth come together. And then he took the heaven that was smoke, made it seven and heavens in two days. So two plus four plus two is eight. And the mountain and the earth's nourishment created when heaven was smoke. But in 79, 27 to 33, watch how he now changes the order. Can you read it for us? Or you want yep. me to read it? I can't see the screen. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I got it. Are you more difficult to create? Or is the heaven that he constructed? He raised its height and has perfected it. It's night he covers with darkness, and it's forenoon he brings out. Here it is. Oh, my goodness. This little glitch here. And after that. Now, the word bada'a means afterwards, after he already created the heaven, made it a ceiling. What did he do? After that, he spread the earth and brought forth therefrom its water and pasture. And the mountains he has fixed firmly. No, 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 no. Dude, you're misreading it. You don't know Arabic. Did you guys catch it? It says he made the heaven a ceiling. Then after that, 
he made the earth's water provisions and the mountains mm -hmm. after the heaven. But in 41, verses 9 to 12, he made the mountain and the earth's nourishments before he fashioned the heaven. So which is it? Which is it? And then finish it. And the mountains he has fixed firmly after the heaven was already made. And then finish it all the way to 33. And that's it. To be a provision and benefit for you and your cattle. Hmm. Yep, that's a, that's pretty much all it. Right. Now, so you got it. But so these guys, this is how you learn. Watch you Christians how to debate Muslims on Bible errors. You don't waste your time because every one contradiction you solve, they're going to bring up 50 others. Say, so wait, Muhammad said the Bible is uncorrupt. So you're saying you don't know as much as Muhammad or you know more than Muhammad? Because mm -hmm. obviously Muhammad didn't have a problem with these numerical errors. But you do. So then become a Bart Ehrman. And then what are you going to do with the errors and mistakes of your Quran? Oh, no, no, no. So you can harmonize them. Oh, harmonize them. But when it comes to the Bible, you don't want to harmonize. You just want to attack. Okay. Yep. All right. Exactly, Raphael. In Raffaella. In Islamic arithmetic, six is eight. Two plus four plus two is not six. I'm sorry, it's not eight. It's it's six. You just don't know Islamic math. Two plus four plus two <laughs> is Islamic six. Math. Okay, go ahead, Brent. What's the next? So we got Adam here. Adam Adam's says that he's a Sunni Muslim. Uh, but you know, he's, 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 you know, you, you can talk. <laughs> you can talk for yourself, uh, Adam. Tell us a little. Tell us yeah. what you told me. Yeah, uh, just just double checking. You can hear me clearly, yeah. Yes, we yeah. like. Yeah. Yes. Cool, yeah. yes. cool, cool. So, yeah, um, Sunni Muslim. I've been obviously Muslim my whole life, All right. and recently I've actually been sort of considering Christianity, um, in terms of obviously the next steps in life. So, I have my own sort of like issues with um, Islam. Obviously, I'm 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 in like that middle stage, if that makes sense, where I'm sort. Of, because obviously I grew up with Islam. It's not it's not something you can just let go like that. Do you know what I mean? It's like obviously everything that I learned and my t teachers and uh, parents teaching me. But then um, looking into Christianity, and actually is the help of you guys. So I just want to say thank you guys. Um, we've been watching uh, your content. Um, not just swallowing up everything you guys have been saying, but also every time, for example, you mention a verse, I actually do look up and... Um, try to see what you what your side is and compare it with what I've obviously been taught. So I'd like to just say that you guys obviously are actually really knowledgeable. I don't understand why a lot of Muslims like to say that you're not, because honestly you are. Um, so I think you guys are doing amazing work. Um, now today was actually a really interesting sort of uh, scenario. Uh, so I, in the comment you can see that I was in a debate for a couple of hours with um, free Salafi that were guys, you know, the, you know the street preachers, you know, um, and we came across various topics. Now, um, obviously, I, I don't have much knowledge, but sure. I tried to defend it as much as possible. Um, and obviously, because I know Islam as well, I was sort of um, debating Islam from like a Muslim perspective saying, okay, are you sure this is what you believe? And then obviously trying to defend Christianity. Now, a few things that they said about Christianity was, um, I'll just summarize it. So sure. their main issues were with obviously like the Bible's preserva preservation and authenticity. Um, they were saying that sort of, of the Romans or the Greek, they sort of added um, sort of ideology into it and sort of mixed it around and i'll be honest with you guys i don't, i'm not uh articulate in biblical history and obviously how it formed that's one that's one thing that i'm really struggling with so again i'm looking for guidance so if you guys could help me i'd really appreciate it. so that's one area where i'm just like okay how did it actually form um sort of you know all these schools and so how obviously how i see it the preservation technique of the christianity and the technique of Islam is quite different in yep. terms of, so Muslims, they have like this Senad, obviously um, this person, this person, you know, going all the way back up. Um, they've got the chains and sort yeah, of- that's a lot, you know, you know that's um, a lot. Yeah, so the, again, there's, I'm just trying to explain like, that's how they do it. 
And then you've got the Christian sort of like cross-referencing style where um, there's obviously loads of uh, Bible copies that obviously you guys look at each other and try to see, okay, uh, this passage actually isn't as strong or it looks like it's completely, um, I, I want to say fabricated or just not in line. Obviously, that's where heretical sort of uh, teachings come from or if it doesn't match up or you know so obviously the bible structure is one thing that i'm struggling with right now and the history on like what actually happened um second thing was the divinity of jesus mm -hmm. so i tried to explain like for example you know where um he says like uh, before abraham was i am i think that's a quote um you, i think also in peter's book where i think someone prayed to jesus and jesus didn't say yo what are you doing D don't pray to me i'm just a man I said, look, only a being worthy of worship would allow someone to worship yeah, to them. If that that's was not the best right. argument, that argument is yeah. not the best. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. That's so, like, in terms of my knowledge, I obviously it's yes, been yes. almost a month now. So obviously, I don't know a lot, and I, I told them to them as well. I don't know much, right? Um, so, and obviously, I'm like their favorite target in it because you don't know. You like they can uh, like manipulate me and stuff. Um, but also in terms of, I said, look at the life of Jesus and compare it to the life of the prophet Muhammad. You guys honestly tell me, who would you follow and who would you call sinless, right? Um, because obviously the Islamic teaching is prophets are sort of, oh, they can make errors, but they can't sin, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then they also, they said to me, okay, look at David in the uh, Bible, uh, he lied or something. I didn't. I, I, that's the first time I heard about that. He lied to someone or right. something, and he, committed, he uh, sent his best friend into battle to die so that he could commit adultery. Yeah, with his yeah. That, yeah. But you brought three issues. Which one you want us to address? If you bring up all the issues, we can't address all of them. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. So my my main problem would be sort of understanding like the Bible in a, itself, like how it came to be, and also the link between the New and the Old Testament, like, yeah, you know, yeah. In the, la the last question, see, these Muslims are either ignorant or dishonest because you come. I you didn't notice that as well, yeah. You talked about Jesus as an example. They went to David. First of all, no one ever claimed that the prophets are not sinners. The difference is, Every story they give you about a prophet who sins, he's rebuked, chastened by God. Rebuked by God, chastened by God. Really, God really it's, 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 it's your Skype. Skype. Ben, it's Ben underscore Malik. What is it? Your Skype? Why? Who wants it? Uh, the guy, the guy, Christian comedy. Yeah, yeah. Benny underscore. Say, Thank you for cutting off as I'm trying to answer this guy. Dude, where, what world are you in, man? I'm trying to hook you up, man. I said, hold on. I'm trying to get the, you know. So it's Benny underscore Malik. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I just sent it to you in private chat. I can't even, damn. Man. And you guys wonder why I, I'm on my channel blocking people, you see? Because I'm talking, he cuts me out. Stop, man, dude. Damn, bro. And friends like you, he needs enemies. Anyway, brother, I'm sorry. My guy's too busy trying to get married on the phone. Now, are you there? He's fly. I mean, Avery's fly. I can't, I can't, I can't hate on him. He's fly, bro. Look at him. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. <laughs> you got it now? He's yeah. a hater. Yeah. He's a hater, man. Okay, I want to I want to answer the question, but I'm afraid he's going to tell me someone else wants my Skype number. Okay. Oh yeah, I, I, I'm sorry that the ones that you challenged and called out want even your information. I gave him my, I even gave him my Skype number five million times. Glenn, don't don't misquote John 10, 34, 36, brother. It's going to be for your destruction. Now coming to you, my friend. Yep. <clears throat> the prophets who sinned were not our moral example. And when they sinned, God rebuked them and chastened them for their sin, even the story of David. This is unlike Muhammad, that when he sins, Allah then sanctions that sin and makes it halal. All right? When Muhammad lusts for uh, his adopted son's wife, Allah then causes Zayd to divorce her so he can marry her and have her. You with me there? Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of that story. Yeah. You understand the difference between the prophet sinning, the prophet sinning, and the true God rebuking them for their sin and not justifying it, and Muhammad sins and his God praises him and sanctions it. Yeah, can I That's just ask this quick question, please? What is it? So do you know when you're saying um, 
God rebukes David in the Bible. Yes. Do you mind explaining like what actually, what was what happened? It's in Second Samuel. So just my David lusted for a married woman, got her pregnant, yeah. killed a man to cover it, and God then punished him for it. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So my point is, God rebukes them, chastens them. He doesn't justify their sin. Muhammad goes around mounting okay. girls, having captive women molested, or lusting for his daughter-in-law, his adopted son's wife. Allah then sanctions it, makes it lawful, halal, and even has him abolish adoptions to save Muhammad's reputation. Yes. This is why they avoided the question. Your question was, when you compare Jesus to Muhammad, because yes. Jesus is the standard, not David not Moses. And number two, even when we look among the servants of Jesus, let's just single out Paul. Paul. Paul was just a human who wasn't good enough to lick Jesus' sandals. Okay. You read the life of Paul. You, you read the sacrifice of Paul. You read how he lived. He makes Muhammad look like garbage from the pit of hell. Muhammad doesn't even come close. And he's just a servant of the Lord. So if I was okay. to look for a moral example among men, because Jesus God in the flesh, Paul would be my hero. So this is why they ran to David. But hold on. Are you saying that Muhammad is like David, an adulterer and a murderer whom God punished and rebuked for his sin? No, because your God sanctioned what Muhammad did, murdering, molesting, raping, and lusting. So that's number one. Number two, coming back to the other issue, because you brought up too many issues. Yes, yeah, sorry. What's the issue about the deity of Christ? You said yeah, something so about they what did they say? Yeah, so essentially um, they said, they used an exact word fallacy. So do you know the same, where did he say explicitly, I am God or something? Okay. Um, they what also did said, did, did Jesus pray to God, that, that sort of thing? Okay. Is that their argument? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so are they saying if Jesus prays to God, he can't be God? Yes. Yeah. So when Allah prays, he can't be God either? See, this point actually slipped my mind, so I didn't actually bring it up. Do you know in the Quran where it says, Ooh, too, many. Yeah. too many. Let me give my you some examples. Yeah. Number one, yeah. Jesus praying to the Father is what we expect if they understood our Bible. We don't believe Jesus yeah. is the Father. We believe he's the Son of the Father, who's one with him in nature and inseparable. And therefore, if Jesus is not the Father, that means he'll be speaking to the Father, communion with the Father, in fellowship with the Father, and the Father speaking to him in communion with him. We'd expect that if they're not the same person. But number two, I don't expect Allah to be praying if Allah is a singular person, because then when he prays and worships, who does he pray and worship? Let me get you the article. We're going to bring it up. You're going to see. Yeah. Okay, just one second. You didn't just want the verses up? Because I got the verses. No, because up. I want to give articles here to help people see this, because you can bring verses, but then when you put the material in their hand, then they can do what you're doing. They go on TikTok. They can, you get what I'm saying? Yep, yep, yep. All right, here. So here it is. I'm going to send it to you in private chat as well. All right. Well, your God, Allah, is not God. So he's Satan. So he has no sons. So, yeah, you're right. You Guy in the background. Now, bring it up and look at it. You'll see. And they're going to tell you, well, the Arabic means this. Well, we go through the Arabic. And by the way, guys, did you know that the God of Judaism prays to? You know this, right, Avery? Yep. Did you know in the Talmud they have God praying? Oh, I didn't know and that. That's in the Talmud. A rabbi to bless him and pray over him? Did you know that? No. You didn't know that? No. Okay, then go with this article. Are you kidding me? No. Are I you didn't. kidding? Me? I didn't know that. All right, here's the article, man. Now you now, man, that's why you're gonna have five thousand and you're gonna put me like you know, I'm gonna be licking the dust of your feet. You're gonna leave me behind, no one's gonna remember me. Here it is. <laughs> right here, right here. Here it is. In the Talmud, they have God praying and a rabbi coming and blessing. God, God tells the rabbi, bless me, pray over me. You sent like the that. wrong, you sent the wrong link. You sent no, the stream link. Why don't you relax? You see where it says uh stream yard. I sent you. Why do I how did I get the stream yard? Yeah. Uh -huh. Why how did I get that? Okay, sorry guys. My apologies. Uh -huh. Here's the article. So let's go with that one because that's there too. All right, right there. All right, there it is. All right, so which one do you want us to go through? The, the, I just this one that the rabbinic Judaism says there, God prays. So go to that one. Okay. <clears throat> oh man, you hit a record today. You got like three thousand two hundred eighteen, bro. 
Yeah, it's a it's a record, and it keeps going. What was that about that clown saying? Yes, I'm the reason why I think, uh, Avery gets more people. He's not like you, and I'm here, and he's got the largest number. You clown. Yeah. I would stuff with your vomit, you piece of. But I want I don't want garbage better than you. But anyway, now before we read about Allah, okay, give me a, be, let give us a time, brother, because I want him to see this as well. When you go, you're gonna scroll down to the section on the Talmud. If you go through this, because I show you where Allah prays, so you're gonna see it says. In fact, the God of rabbinic Judaism, who's not the true God of the Holy Bible, even asked people to pray blessings on him. Right here. And you're going to yes. see how I quote it. You see it? Yeah. Now enlarge it because, okay, you can because you read it. Now watch here. <clears throat> so right out of the Babylonian Talmud, it yep. says. And the Hebrew is right there too. And I give you the link where you can read online. Go read it. So it says, along the same lines, Rabbi Yohanan said in the name of Rabbi Yossi, from where is it derived that the Holy One, blessed be he, prays? Did you catch it? They're asking, hey, where'd you get that uh, Hashem prays? Oh, because yeah. of Isaiah 56, 7. That's where yeah. we know he prays. Yeah. Uh, he says, as it is stated, I will bring them to my holy mountain and make them joyful in the house of my prayer. Now, let me explain why they thought this means... Uh, God prays because literally the Hebrew says, right, the house of my prayer. But in your English translation, it says my house of prayer. Mm -hmm. But the rabbis are reading Hebrew. So in the Hebrew, it says house of my prayer. They're like, wait, wait, house of my prayer. You mean God is in a house who prays? It says my prayer. So I pray in this house. Mm. That's how they took the Hebrew. So go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the, the verse does not say the house of their prayer, but rather the house of my prayer. From here, we see that the Holy One, blessed be he, prays. Now watch what he prays. And you're going to see where Muhammad plagiarized the rabbis again. So what does God pray? And they said, God says, may it be my will <laughs> that my mercy will overcome my anger. <laughs> toward Israel for their transgressions and may my mercy prevail over my other attributes through which Israel is punished and may my conduct and may I conduct myself toward my children uh, Israel with the attribute of mercy and may I enter before them beyond the letter of the law that's all I, I say I said a lot wait because <laughs> The God of rabbinic Jews, the God of Tovia Singer, prays, and they even tell you what he prays? Mm -hmm. You caught it? Yeah. You guys, you seen, I gave you the link. Yeah. Now watch. Then it says that God asked the rabbi, God asked the rabbi, Rabbi, would you bless me and pray over me? And God nods his head. Yes, thank you for praying. Yes, watch. It's right there. Not lying. <laughs> um. Oh, wow. This is wild. So similarly, it was taught, you know, that Rabbi y Ishmael ben Elisha, the high Isn't priest. Isn't it ironic? His name is Ishmael, Ismail. Mm-hmm. Check it out. Okay, go ahead, brother. Go ahead, man. Once on Yom Kippur, I entered the most, the, I entered the innermost sanctum of the holies of holies to offer incense. And in a vision, I saw a, a Katriel, Yah, the Lord a of Holies. Katriel, Yah means the crown of God. Yeah, now notice who it says. Akatriya means the crown of God. Yah, short for Yahweh, the Lord of hosts. So it's saying, I saw God. Mm -hmm. okay. One of the names of God expressing his ultimate authority, seated upon a high and exalted throne. And he said to me, Yishmael, my son, bless me. Damn, God of the Jews is telling a rabbi to bless me. Can you bless me, please? That's wild. I said to him, the prayer that God prays, may it be your will that your mercy overcome your anger and your mercy prevail over your other attributes. And may you act toward your children with the attribute of mercy. And may you enter before them beyond the letter of the law. Now, did you catch what he said? He goes, I prayed the prayer that God prays himself. I just yeah. prayed God's prayer to him, right? Yeah. Now, you want to see how funny it gets? As he's praying, God is nodding and said, yes. Yes. Oh, thank you. Read right there. I said to him, the prayer that God prays, da, 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 right? The Holy One, blessed be he, nodded his head and accepted the blessing. Damn. 
This event teaches us that you should not take the blessing of an ordinary person lightly. In other words, if God Almighty will allow even a maggot to pray and God will accept it, who are you to reject the prayer of someone lesser than you? Wow. If God asked for and accepted a man's blessing, if God asked for and accepted a man's blessing, all the more so that a man must value the blessing of another man. And this is Babylonian Talmud, Barachot, chapter 178, and I give you the link, safaria.org. But then there's another version. Let's read the other version, and we'll go back to Allah. Another English version. And if you scroll, I'll read it for you, so I'll give you time on your phone. I love you, bro. I want you to be because I want to be invited. <laughs> well, Rabbi Yohanan says, in the name of Rabbi Josie, how do we know that the Holy One, blessed be He, says prayers? Because it says, even then will I bring to my holy mom and make them joyful in my house of prayer, or the house of my prayer, literally. It is not said their prayer, but my prayer. Hence, you learn that the Holy One, blessed be He, says prayers. What does He pray? Rabbi Zutra ben Tobi said, in the name of Rab, this is now their God, Hashem, Tobi Singer's God praying. May it be my will that my mercy may suppress my anger and that my mercy may prevail over my other attributes so that I may deal with the children in the attribute of mercy and on their behalf stop short of the limit of strict justice. It was taught, Rabbi Ishmael bin Elisha says, I once entered into the innermost part of the sanctuary to offer incense and saw Akathri'il, Jah, the crown of God, Jah, the Lord of hosts, seated upon a high and exalted throne. He said to me, Ishmael, my son, bless me. I replied, may it be thy will that thy mercy may suppress thy anger and thy mercy may prevail over thy other attributes so that thou mayest deal with thy children according to the attribute of mercy and mayest on their behalf stop short of the limit of justice. And note what it says, and he nodded to me with his head. Here we learn, incidentally, that the blessing of an ordinary man must not be considered light in your own eyes. Two English versions of the same section, Barachot, online, and it's in the article. So not only does the God of rabbinic Judaism praise, he has a rabbi praying over him and blessing him, <clears throat> and God is saying, oh, thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Rabbi Shema. Oh, yeah, thank you. Nodding his head in approval. This is the God of Tovia Singer. Now, coming back to you, make sure you save the article. Let's go on to the top and see if Allah prays. That's wild. Now, All you right. got more material, huh? So, guys, when the rabbis or the Muslims tell you, how can Jesus be God when he prays? How can your God be God when he prays, Tovia Singer? Or you think we're stupid? We don't know your religion? Hmm. Now, and here's the article again I'm putting in the comment section. Watch here. Now, right here, Allah prays. Scroll down so you can see it. Make uh, sure, brother, you have these articles because we give you the Arabic. We can't see the verse because this My goodness, man, I'm going to block this guy. All right. Okay. Okay, 33-43. Watch here. All right. He it is who prays, you salli. Mm -hmm. yeah. From salah, don't let them lie to you. They'll say, oh, it means blessing. No, the word for blessing is barakah. barakah. Yeah. <clears throat> so don't let them lie to you. And his angels, so now notice Allah and the angels are performing salah. But now notice how ridiculous <clears throat> this prayer is. Why? Look how ridiculous. Mm -hmm. He it is who prays for you and his angels too, to bring you forth <clears throat> out of the darkness into the light. For he is merciful to the believers. Now I'm going to ask you a question, Adam. Yeah. I, I understand angels praying to Allah. Oh, Allah, bring these people out of darkness to your light. Why does Allah have to pray to himself and say, Allah, yes, Allah. Bring them out of darkness into your light. Okay, Allah. I don't know. He <laughs> Surely he could just, he doesn't need to pray. He can just will for it to happen. Though. Yeah, but he's praying good though, brother. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So I don't get it. Yeah. Yeah, you don't get it. Neither does Allah nor his messenger. <laughs> All right. Now, so are we in that first article or you jump to the other article? We're in the first article. No, go back to the second one. It's all there. You didn't need to go to the second, oh, the second one. Oh, okay. All right. That's I'm like, okay. All right. So all the right. one where it says God of Judaism prays. Okay. God of Judaism. Yeah, that's the, we're in the second one. So should I scroll up? Because you was talking about Allah in this one. And, yeah, yeah, this one is, uh, but we want to go to the God of Judaism. All right. Yeah, so the God of Judaism prays. I don't see it. I see Allah, schizophrenic deity, who worships himself. You got to give it some time. It's probably loading. Forgive me, sir. 
I'm not a doctor. I don't have patients. You'd have you own a hospital with your patients, <laughs> sir. Yeah, thank you. I can't see that, brother. Can you see it yet? A little more. Remember, I need glasses. I'm not like you. All right. So I'm just making sure it's on screen for you. All right. How's this? Okay. Okay. That's good. Enough. Okay. Now here. Now here's another verse, brother. Chapter 2, verse 157. Upon them rest the prayers and mercy from their Lord. Salawatun. Salawat, it's plural. Min rabbihim. The prayers from their Lord. Wa rahmatun. Notice mercy and prayers are different here. Yep. Yeah. Not the same. So it's saying, upon these people, Allah will shower his prayers and his mercy. And then we're going to look at even Halali Khan translation. You may have to just make it a little smaller so I can read the entire verse. A little smaller. All right, right there. Now here, this is Halali Khan's translation. Now notice they give you the word salawat. They are those on whom are the salawat. Now they put blessings. No, blessings is barakat. Who are blessed and will be forgiven from their Lord. Mercy. So that's another one where he prays. Now we're going to scroll down to the other one. Okay. Now here I'm quoting from Edward Henry Palmer, who translates the Quran and has a note. Now look how he translates 33, 33, 43. And look what he's going to say. He it is who prays you subtly for you and his angels to bring you forth out of the darkness. Now we read that 33, 40. Now notice his note. The footnote in 145 verse 1. That's the footnote to this. Oh. The same word is used as is rendered pray in all other passages in the Quran. So notice what he's telling you. Every time this word salah appears in the Quran, it always oh. means prayer. Though the commentators interpret it here as meaning blessed. Notice the commentators explain it way. So too in the formula which is always used after Muhammad's name, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's saying, this is why Muslims say, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may God bless him and preserve him, is literally, may God pray for him and salute him. <laughs> he's honest, because he's not a Muslim who tries to hide. Because the word sallallahu means Allah's sallah, beyond Muhammad and his blessing. Wow. Means, literally. Wow. That's okay. new. Well, these, uh, brother, just... Go, you know, use my search engine, but now you got it, brother. Now you go. That's why next month I'm going to see like 10,000 and I'm only got 200. All right. <laughs> now that's 3343 to 157 and another one. And then I show you where the word salah is used for prayer, but with Muhammad, it changes meaning. Now go to 3356. It's going to show up right there. Uh -huh. Verily God and his angels pray. Now, how are you going to get around this? It says God, Allah is joining a group. The angels, Allah and the angels together as a group perform this action. What do they do together? Allah and his angels. You saluna ala nabi. Allah and the angels are praying on the prophet, not to the prophet, on the prophet. Because oh, well, Allah didn't pray to. We didn't say he prayed to Muhammad. He's praying on Muhammad, but who is he praying to? So you ask them. The Muslims are listening. When the angels perform salah, does that not mean prayer? Mm -hmm. Yes. So are they praying to Allah for Muhammad? Yes. But Allah is joining them. He's performing the same action with them. Then it goes on to encourage the Muslims to do likewise. So the example is this. Look, you Muslims. Allah and his angels are praying for Muhammad. That's why you should pray too. Oh, you believe, pray, salu for him and salute him in salutation. So if Jesus can't be God, because he prays to the Father, then Allah can't be God because he's praying to who? And the God of Judaism can't be God because he's praying to who? And he has a rabbi blessing him. Now let's look at a couple of hadiths. We'll go to your other point. 1387. Abu Umama. You know what that means in English, brother, Adam? Abu, Abu Umama. Umama. Father means, of Umama. Father of your mama. Yo mama. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Don't get yourself killed. Okay. The father of your mama. <laughs> And now notice, okay. notice how many groups are involved in performing salah pray. Look, count. <clears throat> Abu Umama yeah. reported that the Messenger of Allah said, Allah and his angels and the people count, Allah, angels, and the people of the yeah. heaven and the earth, that's four, yeah. even the ants and the rocks yeah. and the fish, six entities, pray 
for blessings on those who teach people good. Now, no Muslim is going to deny that angels are praying or that people in heaven and earth are praying, that even animals have consciences to pray. Then why do they deny Allah praise when he's part of the group performing salah? Now, I'm going to give you another version of this because sadly, the link to this section is defunct. It went offline because Aisha Buley's site went down, but you can find the archive.org. Now here, 2685, this is online. Same hadith. Notice it says, this hadith is Hassan Gharib Sahih, meaning it's good and it's yeah. sound. Yeah. Okay, Abu Isa said. Now, 2685 from Jami Tirmidhi. Abu Umama al-Bahili narrated, the father of your mama, two men were mentioned before the Messenger of Allah. One of them, a worshiper and another scholar. So the Messenger of Allah said, the superiority of the scholar, of the worshiper, is like my super superiority over the least of you. Now count how many again are performing salah. <clears throat> then the yeah. Messenger of Allah said, Indeed Allah, His angels, the inhabitants of the heavens and the earth, even the ants in the hole, even the fish say, Salah. There you go. So why do you have a problem with Jesus being God and praying to the Father when that's what we expect? If the Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Spirit, the Spirit's not the Father, and they love one another, and commune with one another and have fellowship with one another, then we'd expect them to be praying to one another because prayer is not just worship, it's communion. But I want to know who does Allah pray to when he joins the angels and the ants and the fish and the people of heaven and earth to pray. Can I just add something? Yes. Yeah, so um, I think that the sort of, like the Islamic understanding of God's nature, in my opinion anyways, um, is slightly skewed um in terms of <laughs> yeah so like understanding who god is for example do you know um the muslim explanation of why god uh, took jesus up instead uh took jesus up just before he died and someone else died on the cross right um allah said basically that it made he made it look like that jesus died right but it's someone completely different right so well, my question that. today yeah i i asked them today um like can you explain this and uh what does this tell you about god's nature yeah um because to me it sounds like because if we believe yeah that god is truth right if we believe god is truth this naturally means that god can't incite a lie he can't he exactly. can't inspire lies right yes, exactly. by nature so even if, for example, this this was some way to punish the Jews or punish people, like um, basically because they explain that um, God uses their ways to punish them, right? Which I was like, okay, how does making someone else, some innocent person, die instead of Jesus is their way of getting punished? I don't know, but um, yeah. So how I told them this is inciting a lie not just for the christians at that time but also the non-christian sources that said yeah jesus died what do they ha what did the non-christian people have to do with any of that does that make sense yeah and what do they say also, like, yeah islamic i also this is my like point to back that up i was like islamically we have like jesus and then we have the prophet muhammad right islamically we don't have a prophet named in between right now if if God wanted to clear this up, he has all power to send another messenger to say, look, guys, um, Jesus didn't actually die. You know, uh, God, uh, uh, God made it look like basically there would be another there'll be prophets in between here, making sure that the Christians stay on the right track. Right. But Islamically, we don't have a source there. And historically, um, if you look objectively, we don't have a source that says, yeah, Jesus was replaced by someone else. The only source that we have there is the Islamic source. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. In other words, yeah. the evidence from those who were there in the first century, even that's why you have skeptical yeah. scholars like Bart Ehrman, whom they love, says yeah, it's a yeah, fact they, of history. It, it was killed. Fact of history. Christ was killed. Yeah. yeah. So they even told me to look at um, that guy, Bart, Bart Ehrman, Honestly, Good. before that discussion, I've never heard of him. So after this, I'll hopefully get yeah, Bart Ehrman, 
he was an agnostic yeah. atheist right. who lost his faith in the Bible because okay. of the variant readings, but then lost his faith in God because of the suffering in the world. But I have dealt with Ehrman, and if you take Ehrman out of context, then you will be misled. But Ehrman, that they're appealing to, tells you, we know this as a fact of history. Jesus was killed by crucifixion. He also says, and I have the sources, and you can hear his lectures, that the disciples of Jesus, and he mentions two of them by name, Peter and Mary Magdalene, saw what he calls, what Ehrman calls, because he doesn't believe in God, bereavement visions, where they had visions where they believed they saw Jesus alive, physically, bodily, alive, and now he's living in heaven, physically, bodily, and begins ruling as God. And they went and started preaching that. This is what Ehrman says. So you see how dishonest they are. They'll tell you, go to Ehrman, who will tell you, well, there are a lot of variant readings in the Bible, but the same Ehrman will tell you, this is not my comment. This is him. We'll tell you, yeah, in spite of the variant readings, we can know that what we have today is what they basically wrote down back then. And you know how you know okay. that? He believes that? You know how you know he believes that? He not only says it, but you know how you know he believes that the Gospels, the writings of the New Testament, they have been preserved in the extent manuscripts. And so that we can know what they wrote back then because of the copies we have today. You know how we, we know that he believes that? Adam? No, honestly, this is all like new okay, to me. Let me tell you how. Because he tells you, this is what Mark said about Jesus. This is what Paul wrote about Jesus. How would he know what Paul or Mark wrote about Jesus if he didn't believe that you have what they originally wrote in the manuscripts? Actually, peace for life. I buried Shabir Ali, humiliated him. And I buried Muhammad and your Quran and his Satan, Allah. That's why he won't debate me again. My first debate, and he got smoked like Jesus smoked your prophet. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But anyway, coming back to you. Yeah. Did you get it? When he tells you, yeah, Paul right. said this. Say, uh, Dr. Ehrman, how do you know Paul said that? Oh, because he wrote in 1 Corinthians. How do you know that's what he wrote in 1 Corinthians? Oh, because of the copies. Oh, you mean because of the copies? Right. Okay. You are able to... Confidently tell me this is what he wrote because of the copies of Corinthians showing us we have what he wrote. See that part they okay. don't tell you, which shows their dishonesty. Yeah. So um also like a few things that I found sort of um like amusing to myself today. So they they claim this is their claim. They claim that Arianism is the true Christianity. Yet <laughs> honestly, I was like I get, do you know the side eye? The side eye I gave this guy. I looked at him like, what? you know what that means? You know what that means, brother? Go for it. To enlighten me. I told you. If I'm here Arianism is true, that means all of the Quran is Satan and Muhammad is an antichrist. Do you know why? Uh, please enlighten me. Yeah, go for it. Because Arius taught that the Father created the Son, yeah. the Logos, who becomes Jesus, as his first creature and made him. Yeah. A second God, and that second God, exactly. who is yeah. the Logos, created everything else. That's exactly. true Christianity. Exactly. So I looked at, I look, I genuinely looked at it. I was like, <laughs> "You're tweaking, bro. Don't say that again, bro. please." Okay. <laughs> like okay, even yeah. me, with my, again, I don't know why people are asking me to debate them. Like I told you, I've only been looking into this for like about three weeks now. I don't know anything. Do you know what I mean? So please, well, just but understand. Back. They just told you that's true Christianity, right? Yes, they did. And I looked at them. Okay. I was like, no, please. Yes. Yeah. This is what you tell them. Say, excuse me. So you're saying Muhammad is a liar? What do you mean? Because Arius taught Jesus is a God created before all creation, the first of God's creatures. And as God, the Logos, he created everything else, meaning he created Muhammad. And then he became the man Jesus and died on the cross for our sins. That's true Christianity? Then you just buried the Quran. So why are you Muslims? <laughs> Because even, even, I'm pretty sure with Arianism, they still believe that Jesus came down and he also died. Right? No, but they don't believe Jesus is God or yeah. a second God who created everything and came down and became flesh. If they did, then they're Arians. So why don't they follow Arius? I don't know. Uh, and then on I top think, of that, yeah. guess what books Arius used to try to prove his position? 
Okay, yeah, I don't know that much, but yeah. The same it? Bible we read today. He didn't think the Bible was corrupt. He was quoting the same Old Testament, New Testament that the Trinitarians were quoting because they all agreed these are the books that God inspired and preserved. Right. It was an issue of interpretation. So with them, um, they also tried to say to me, like, the Bible that we have, like, it was compiled. This is, I'm quoting them. Um, it was compiled a thousand years after <laughs> Christ. <laughs> and also they said, also they said that um, <laughs> the Council of Nicaea decided what the, the content of the canon of the Bible was. And they also said... That we don't have together. actual authors. Yep. Okay, later, let's laugh together. They said the Bible's compiled a thousand years later, right? That was their quote. I quoted them, yeah. Okay, but let's go with it. But then they said the Council of Nicaea decided the Bible? What the canon... The, exactly! What okay. the canon of the Bible was. Okay, hold on. Council of Nicaea is 325. Exactly. If the Bible was compiled a thousand years later, how do you have the Bible being com compiled in the year 325, which is less than a thousand years? <laughs> This is Islamic. How, how can it? the Council of Nicaea decide what is canon out of the Bibles that we have, right? Yeah, no, what, what I'm saying, was, before yeah. we get there, I'm not trying to cut you. I want you to see how they contradict themselves. Follow me. They Perfect, told yeah. you the Bible we have is a thousand years later, right? Yes, that's their quote. Yeah. Okay, but then they said the Council of Nicaea canonized the Bible, but that was 325. Yeah. That means they already had the Bible in 325, right? To decide what is canon. Yeah, but that's 300 years yeah. later, not 1,000 exactly. years later. So which of exactly. it, which do we find? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. So, yeah. By the way, it's yeah. a lie from the pit of hell. I challenge him to say, quote me the <clears throat> notes of Nicaea in 325. Show me anywhere in 325 where they even discuss the canon. And canonize the Bible. They're lying to you. Well, yeah, that's the thing. They also said, like, the idea of the Trinity came a lot after this as well. No way. You want me to laugh again? Because yeah. I'm hurting my stomach and my throat. Go for it. I think laughing is a good thing. Okay. If Go I ahead. show you writings of church fathers and disciples of the apostles, hundreds yeah, of years before Nicaea, confirming the Trinity and Christ as God Almighty. Here, let me give you one article, okay? Yeah, one. I'd actually appreciate some sources. Oh, yeah, here, you. If you ever go to my blog, answeringislamblog.wordpress.com, everything you need is there, but I'm going to give you the link. Here. I'm gonna, now, remember they talk about Sunnat Isnat, the chain? Yeah, the chain, yeah. We have a better chain than theirs. Here, I'm going to show you. Now, guys, I'm giving you the links. So here it is. You guys can save the links, study them. Here it is. Now, I'm going to give them to you in the private chat. He's going to open this up. Save it. Okay, now, here's what I want you to remember. Ignatius was a disciple of the apostles. He was an eyewitness okay. to the apostles of Jesus, such as John the Apostle. He wrote seven letters that have been preserved between 107 to 112 AD. And he wrote them as he was going to be killed in the Roman Colosseum, being fed to the beasts. And he went there willfully. He even said to the Christians at Rome, do not stop me from being killed because I want to die as a martyr for Jesus. This is the kind of men God raised up. In those seven letters, he's a bishop who was appointed by the apostles, who's going to die as a martyr, and he's excited to die for Jesus, to show how much he loves Jesus. May the same Holy Spirit that filled him fill us. Watch what he's going to say about Jesus. And he's writing to some of the churches that the apostles visited and wrote to. Guys, here's the article. Now, if you scroll down, <clears throat> Avery, to the sections. Okay, scroll down. Here, look what he says. Okay, right here, begin. Greeting. Look what he says to Jesus. Being united and elected through the true passion by the will of the Father, Jesus Christ, our God. To Theu Himon, literally the God of us. Notice, Jesus is not the Father, but he's the God of us. Okay? Okay, now watch yeah. the second part. We're just going to read the highlights. Scroll down a little bit, brother. Look what he says here. And stirring up yourselves by the blood of God, because Jesus is God. He became man. He shed his blood. So God has blood, huh? 
That's Ignatius, yes. a disciple of the apostles. Now scroll down again, brother. Down, not up. Because we can't see the... Okay, right here. Now watch here, chapter 7. Look what he says about Jesus. There is one physician who is possessed both of flesh and spirit. See? He's God in flesh, folks. Flesh, he's human. Spirit, he's God. Both born, made, and not made. Did you hear it? Jesus was born, made, of the virgin. But as God, he's unmade, unbegotten. God existing in flesh. He is true life and death. He was the life who chose to die. Both of Mary and of God. First passable meaning he died and now impassable. And this is in 107 AD. And he's writing this to churches appointed by the apostles. And he was appointed by the apostles. Now watch the next one. For our God, Jesus Christ, was, according to the appointment of God, conceived in the womb of Mary, of the seed of David, but by the Holy Ghost. Did you catch it? He's our God, the, but he's appointed yeah. by God. That's the Father. And he was conceived by Mary of the Holy Spirit. That's three, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that is three. Let's yeah. go down to the other one. Just let's work, work through this. All right. <clears throat> go down. Until, okay, now notice again, we're just going to read the highlights. There's too much to read. Yeah, 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 yeah. God himself <clears throat> manifested in human form for the renewal of eternal life. So God appeared in human form. That's what Ignatius taught, who was appointed by. This is the Sennet. See, we have an Isnat. We have the writings of Christians who were yeah. the disciples of the apostles, who were the eyewitnesses of Jesus. Our isnat is better than theirs. It doesn't come hundreds of years later. Now let's go to the next section. You mind we go through this, uh, Avery, for this young man? All right, now watch here. Again, look what he says about Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> who was with the Father before the beginning of time. Notice he's not the Father. But Christ existed with the Father before the beginning of time. Wow. Yeah. Now let's go down to the next one. <clears throat> so the Lord did nothing without the Father being united to him. So Jesus is inseparable from the Father, only does what the Father <clears throat> wills. And notice, Jesus Christ, <clears throat> who came forth from one Father and is with and has gone to one. Let's go down. We're going to keep reading. <clears throat> now, that there is one God who is manifesting himself by Jesus Christ, his son. <clears throat> so the father made himself known by his son. So Jesus is not the father. And this son is his eternal word, meaning he's the word of the father. <clears throat> Sorry, my throat. Not proceeding forth from silence. And who in all things pleased him that sent him. So notice, son is not the father. But the Father and the Son are timeless, uncreated, truly God, and the Son became flesh. <clears throat> mm. Now, here's the link to the article again. Now, a few more snippets. Keep going, brother. Yeah. Again, Ignatius. Now, that was his epistle to the Magnesians. Here's another letter. Look what he says about Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Okay. Notice it says, The majesty of the Most High Fathers and Jesus Christ, His only begotten son so is jesus the father no he he is manu we you autu his only son and then look what he calls him later on <clears throat> which according to the love of jesus christ our god but in the greek it's more powerful it's not jesus our god it's the god of us jesus is the god of us okay yeah but then later on he, he says named from christ and from the father which I also salute you in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the father. So he's not the father. He's the son of the father. He's the God of us, his only son. And then what else? Look at the last line. And in Jesus Christ, our God, to Theo Himon, the God of us. We're going to read a few more. It's going to get better. A lot of snack bar. All of the crowns under the feet of Jesus. Now watch here. Epistle to the Romans. For our God, Jesus Christ, now that he is with the Father. Now watch the others. A few more minutes, we'll be done with this. Chapter 1, thanks to God for your faith. I glorify God. Who? Even Jesus Christ. Who's our God? Jesus. And he's the God I glorify, who has given you such wisdom. Don't. Christun, ton, 
Theon, the god, Ton, Hutas, or Hutus, Himas, Sophisanta. Literally, I glorify Jesus Christ, the God who made you wise. Now, Can I ask a quick question, please? Yes. So you see, like, all these early writings, yeah? Um, is this where the sort of understanding of, um, so I think it's called, like, divine simplicity? Or... No, that, that took centuries to develop. <clears throat> not the sense okay. that they thought God was composed of parts that you can separate. God is not a physical, material being where you can dissect him. But that's right. something that comes later. This is referring to the fact that the Christians were taught Father is not the Son, <clears throat> Son is not the Spirit, and yet the Son is Almighty God who became flesh, mm -hmm. who died for us. All of that in Ignatius between 107 and 112 AD, shortly after the books of the New Testament. So you see, we have this unbroken chain, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. now watch this, though. Look what he says. He now says, the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us be nailed with him, be united to him, both in flesh and spirit, and are established in love through the blood of Christ. That doesn't sound like Islam, <clears throat> right? Being fully persuaded with respect, to our Lord, that he was truly of the seed of David, according to flesh, so he's physically human, and the Son of God, according to will and power of God, that he was truly born of a virgin, here's a virgin birth, was baptized by John, that's John the Baptist order, that all righteousness might be fulfilled by him, <clears throat> truly, under Pontius Pilate, inherited the texture, nailed to the cross, here it is, an eyewitness of the apostles, who received from them that he was killed on the cross, right, and was resurrected through his resurrection. That's epistle to the Smyrnians. A few more, let's go down. Hope you're not bored with this, brother, because I'm going to show you. This is our evidence. The overwhelming historical, textual, archaeological evidence is all in confirmation of the Bible and Christianity taught in the Bible, not Islam. Now watch here, chapter 8. He's got it. Oh, right there. Sorry. Chapter 3. Look what he says. Look what he says about Jesus. Guys, pay attention. An eyewitness of the apostles, appointed by them, who died as a martyr. Look what he's writing about Jesus. Look for him who's above all time. Who's above all time? Jesus. Eternal and invisible, yet who became visible for our sakes. So Jesus is above all time? Well, he's above all time. He's timeless and he's uncreated. And by nature, he's invisible, but became visible. Impalpable and impassable. Yet he became passable and became flesh so he can die on our account. And who in every kind of way suffered for our sakes. Scroll down. We got a few more guys, but we're got to It's worth it. So you see, you just destroyed the Muslims. Now notice, this is Epistle to Polycarp. He's writing to another bishop who was an mm -hmm. eyewitness of the apostles, both of whom who were martyred, died as martyrs for Christ. He goes, I pray for your happiness forever in our God, Jesus Christ. And I say, note how Ignatius <clears throat> unhesitantly, unhesitantly, uh, these words, affirms that the Lord Jesus is not only the God of us all, and not merely a God, and the only begotten Son of the Father that shed his blood, but this blessed saint also testifies that Christ is the one who is above time and therefore eternal, who was invisible and became visible in order to suffer for our salvation. You caught it? Yeah. Okay, so I can see I can see the evidence, yeah. This is before Nicaea. Okay. Now, if you scroll down in that article, guys, here's the link again. He's going to show you in that same article, I linked to my other post on other Christians. If he scrolls down, you're going to see it. Boy, this guy's slower than molasses, bro. Were you sent to teach me patience, bro? You just uh, <laughs> saw, you saw what he did right at him? You know, he's doing it deliberately. Right? He wants me to stumble. He can look better and I look mean. Let's see if he's going to bring it up again before the rapture. Oh, I'm up again. Hold on, man. Hold on. Just, uh... Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Aldo Billahi Muhammad ar-Rahim. Here we go. Here we go. So, what did they say about Arius again? Says so I can lose my throat again. What do you say? Uh, yeah. So they were saying that um, Arianism was the truth. The truth. <laughs> 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 all right because now, so they on. believe that jesus was so solely a prophet all right no that's a lie now if he enlarges it exactly. in that article guys 
I link to other posts where I quote other early Christians, other disciples of the apostles, or the disciples of the bishops who are appointed by the apostles. There it is right there. Justin Martyr. Origen. Were the early church fathers Trinitarian. Tertullian. <clears throat> there you go right there. It's all yours, guys. You don't need to look for the quotes. It's there. Save them. Use them. You have an unbroken chain, an isnat, from the first century, New Testament documents, second century, third century, fourth century to Muhammad. They all worship the Trinity, worship Jesus as God in the flesh, believe Christ died on the cross for our sins, rose again physically, and returned physically. You can't destroy that evidence. Any other points, brother, or you got your answers? Um, yeah, so like I said, it was um, it was quite a lengthy discussion. It was roughly about three hours. Um, yeah, I was standing outside um, in the British weather. I know it's a bit no notorious with the British weather. But um, uh, yeah, so they also, oh yeah, they tried to compare the morality, the mor yeah, the morality of Islam versus Christianity. Now they brought up a lot of Old Testament verses. And like I said before um, in the in the stream, of, of course, my knowledge isn't all that. So I was like, oh, brother, I can't, I don't know how to explain this um, because I don't know. I don't know the context. Yeah. I don't know um, what's actually happening. I don't know how accurate the translations that they're reading, how accurate that is as well. <laughs> and then they tried to, they said this as well. I think this is going to make you crack up again. They said that every war that Muhammad participated in was justified. So wait. If I then quote the every, Muslim, every single war, yeah. If I then quote the Muslim sources that say that say the pagans went out of their way, out of their way to try to avoid conflict with Muhammad, <clears throat> even beg <clears throat> Abu Talib, his uncle, to try to get Muhammad to stop mocking their gods, insulting their gods, because they didn't want a problem. And yet, mm -hmm. Muhammad insisted on insulting their gods. So he antagonized them. And then that when Muhammad went to Medina, he would then send mm, caravans. I'm sorry. He would send raiders, Muslims, to raid the Meccan caravans, rob them, causing a conflict and a war. What are they going to say to you? I don't know. That's that's also, again, like, this is what I mean. So, like, they like they. We've we've already painted the picture that Muhammad is perfect, right? Yes. So even when I brought up child marriage with them, yeah. Oh, he's perfect. Um, well, he does have. Yeah. He's perfect in pedophilia. He's a perfect pedophile. They're right. That's, so they explain that verse to be a woman who like biologically can't menstruate. Oh, you, hold on, hold on. Okay. That's what they said. Although you're gonna make me I give up on life. Is yeah. you're gonna make me give up on life. <laughs> sorry, I told you it's a lengthy discussion that I had. This guidance that I'm looking for. Yeah, sorry. Muhammad Rajim. Okay, let me give you the article on it. Okay, so that means either they're liars like Satan, Muhammad's father, or they're ignorant of their sources. I'm going to give you an article we wrote. We quote all the major Sunni scholars, Ibn Kathir, Qurtubi, Tabari, all of them. And they just said these men are liars. So let me give it to you. Oh, brother. I think, yeah, but that's, that's what Salafi are, isn't it? They don't really... They don't, they don't really agree with scholarship anyways. You mean they don't agree with the Salaf al-Salih and they don't agree with the Mufassirun? So where do they come up with the interpretation? Of course they do. <clears throat> so, yeah, exactly. That, that's what I asked them. So I was like, okay, so what's it? Because uh, um, this isn't about, like, again, we had two uh, debates really about Christianity and then we had debate about Islam, right? So I asked them, okay, what's the difference between Sunni and Salafi? So they said, oh, yeah, we're part of Sunni, but our understanding of... I don't care about the understanding, because exactly. what I they, they, they... is what the Quran says. Lam yahidna means have not menstruated yet. It's not exactly. talking about they can't menstruate. It says lam yahidna, they can't menstruate yet. So now I just sent him the article. And let me know when you want to wrap it up, brother, because we can come back and answer his questions later, because I got Actually, that. Yes. Wow. That clown who that anti trinitarian that got a berry. Oh, yeah, yeah, my bad. Yeah. yeah. Not you. It's just this clown because he's he's barking. So I want to take him out because he's a clown. Now <clears throat> yeah, here been, yeah, just to say, yeah, we've been we've been going on three three hours and forty five yeah. minutes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. yeah. I, I, yes, I am yeah. Digging myself Avery out. can contact me when you want me to come and answer your questions thoroughly, and he can do it. He doesn't need me, but in case you want me to, and we'll come on. But 
I have about a two hour window and I want to destroy this guy's fake God, this blasphemer yeah. and put him in his place. But Lord willing, here it is the article. Now, if you're going to here it is, guys, save it. And he's going to give you the links as well. Avery will give you the links and it's here. So it's all, it's all in the private chat. Okay. So now, he's going to go to the commentators on 65 verse four. He's going to scroll down and show you. Not one of them said that this is not referring to child brides. Not one of them. Not one of these. You're going to scroll down. You're reading the translations. You're going to get to the commentators. All right. Okay. Not one of them. Okay. Is this Not them? Because I'm seeing, you know, interpretation. Okay. These, are the, um, these are the translations. Stuck for right. the right. right there. You start. Fath al Bari. You went too far down, dude. If you want to, I can't read it. You're going to have to march it. So, are you going to have to read it? Fath read al Bari. It. That's right. Ibn Hajr. And this is the commentary on the Quran. What do they say about 65 verse 4? Is it referring to prepubescent, premature minors who will have sex and be divorced? See what it says. Read it for it, buddy. And those who haven't menstruated yet, he made, he made the waiting period three months for those who haven't menstru menstruated yet, which indicates that giving her into marriage before puberty is permissible. Yeah, now if you can read that smaller font, go ahead. So you don't have to keep doing that, but everyone got the article. So wait, Ibn Hajar al Askalani, who is the commentator on Bukhari, says that means you can do what with children? Which you indicates can, what? You can give, you can marry them before put puberty. Full screen, the article full screen instead of us. I know I'm good looking, but forget us. Just put that <laughs> on the full screen. All right. Can you do that? I think so. Hold on. All right, right there. Switch indicates that giving her into marriage before puberty is permissible. What about Ibn Kathir? Look what he says. That's Ibn Kathir. The same for the young who have not reached the years of menstruation. That's Ibn Kathir's second one. But we can't see the name Ibn Kathir. Boy, if I find your phone, I'm going to burn it, brother, because I love you, sir. There's a delay, Sam. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, because I'm going to. But one day you get married. Does anyone object? I object. <laughs> He's going to destroy this woman's life, but greater is the reward in the kingdom. Okay. So that's Ibn Kathir. Now, Tafsir al Jalalain. Look what they say. And also for those who have not yet menstruated because of their young age. Tanwir al Mirbas, min Tafsir ibn Abbas. What about the waiting period of those who do not have menstruation before they are too young? All of them say it's about premature minors who are too young and haven't had their period. They can be married off and have sex and be divorced. I mean, we can go on and on. It's all right. So why are yeah, that's the thing. I mentioned these sources. I mentioned multiple tafsirs, but especially when I mentioned them, they're like, "Wait, what? Sorry." Then they looked, and we didn't. Um, they tried to um, explain that the marriage concept in this case is the contract marriage. Right? Dude, can you stop torturing me? Because I'm about to give up on life. <laughs> I'm sorry. I told you it was chapter, a long conversation. Chapter thirty-three forty-nine says. I've quoted that as well. Chapter thirty-three yes. forty-nine says. There is no waiting period for a woman who hasn't had sex to consummate the marriage. This is talking about the waiting period of women who have had sex and been divorced. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm. I was trying to articulate to them. And what did they say? Yes, yeah, so they explained that no, no, it was abrogated and then it's the contract marriage. Okay, brother, can you say goodbye for them to me? Because then I would waste my time. That's okay. Salam, 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 salam. Because Ibn Kathir said, no, there is no abrogation. None of these sources say abrogation. Yeah, See, that's I, what I mean. I was, yeah, this, this, this debate was like, it was a bit strange. Do you know what I mean? I was just like, okay. But yeah. Utla, a cookie for couple folks, mommy. <laughs> you made me lose my few brain cells. Dude, if they're that I'm so stupid, sorry. No, it's not your fault. I'm not blaming you. <laughs> why waste your time? Yeah. That's so why my I'm going right. to be live again tomorrow, bro. So yes. if you want to come back yeah. tomorrow, um, you know, and, and continue to ask your questions, get stuff cleared up, you yeah. can come through tomorrow. Yep. Yeah. 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 Lord, right. so, but anyway, I'll, I'll, if you I'll come tomorrow, up. it's going to be you and Avery. And like I said, he don't need me. God has blessed with the knowledge because I got to drive back. But anyway, no, it was no. great, brother. Let me know if you want to do another because, hey, bro, I blew you up. You had over 3,000, player. Yeah, that's good, man. <laughs> player, thank, uh, can I just quickly just say thank you to both of you? Yeah? Anytime. You. Anytime. Of course, you don't need to thank us. Thank Jesus who loves you and is saving you from Islam. Thank him. 
Like, yeah, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Absolutely, Thank you. bro. Thanks for coming, man. Thanks for coming. Keep searching, yeah. man. Keep coming through, and uh, hopefully, you know, you'll 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 accept Christ as your Lord, man. Drop yeah. drop off Islam once and for all. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take care, God, brethren. I'm gonna see if this guy's serious. I'm gonna bring him on because he worships a fake God because he's a fake, and we're gonna glorify Christ. If not, then we'll see what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go live in about 20 minutes. I gotta see if this guy's serious. So I love you, brother. I'll love talk you to you guys soon, and the Lord bring you out of Islam and save Muslims. It's God. I'll see you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Take care, guys. Thanks for coming. Thanks. Yep. Nice to meet you, Adam. No. Problem. All right, guy. Yep, absolutely. All right, guys, man, what a live stream. We uh I think at the top we was like three thirty-three hundred, thirty three hundred plus. Man, what a blessed stream this was, man. So I hope that you guys got a lot of things answered for you. I hope that you guys learned a lot, gleaned a lot, absorbed a lot. Make sure you rewatch this, share it. Um and you know, do do as you wish. Now, I just gotta say something real quick though, because there there was a channel. Um, like, I don't mind if you guys like share my stuff and clip stuff and things of this nature, but do not make your title the exact same title as my videos. Like that, that just doesn't make sense for you to do that. Cause that'll take away from my videos, you know, like just retitle it, retitle it, do whatever to make it title it, whatever you want. Just don't make it the same title as me. That doesn't make sense. So uh, I saw that earlier. I think it was a channel called Jesus Saves or something like that. I don't know, but who has the same title as me? And um, yeah, I, I don't. That's not cool. Don't do that. Change change the title up. Um, but you can clip and, and share and, and do all of that. That's no problem. Just retitle it. That doesn't make any sense. All right. So with that being said, man, God bless each and every one of you. Thanks for coming through. Like I said, I'll be live again tomorrow. Um, around 2 p.m., 3 p.m. Uh, Central Central Time. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll announce it. I'll post it, of course, and and you guys be ready to come through, man. Um, I don't know what topic we'll have. We'll see. We'll see what the Holy Spirit gives me. But yeah, that's it. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you all for the super chats. Um, let's keep on sharing the, the 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 ministry. Let's keep on, you know. Uh, liking the stuff. Make sure, guys, if you haven't done it already, hit the like button. There should be well over, you know, 2,300 likes already uh, before I end this video, uh, before I end the stream. So it helps out with the support, guys. Thank you all for the gifts and the super chats. Guys, Patreon, PayPal, thank you guys so much. Uh, Venmo and Zell, thank you guys. I appreciate you. I, I thank and praise God for you. So you guys be blessed. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.